It was back in 1961 when a youngster named Sonny Jurgensen quarterbacked the Eagles to a dramatic last-second win against the team who would later lead the Washington Redskins. Two years later, the Redskins got their revenge. Norm Sneed led Washington to victory. But what's ironic is that these two quarterbacks, Sneed and Jurgensen, would trade teams in 1964. It has also been a series where anything can happen. Relative unknowns have stolen the spotlight. Remember Tony Green? In 1978, he returned to punt 80 yards to give Washington a win. And last year, Andre Waters' 89-yard kickoff return gave Philadelphia an upset victory and almost cost the Redskins a playoff berth. Today, it's Philadelphia's turn to travel down I-95. It's their 100th meeting. The Eagles and the Redskins coming up from the nation's capital on CBS. CBS Sports presents... The National Football League. Today, the Philadelphia Eagles against the Washington Redskins. It's a bit on the humid side here in Washington, D.C. Another capacity crowd, more than 55,000 on hand at RFK Stadium. Temperature 76 degrees. We may get some rain later. And, Hank, this is the second week in a row we've seen the Eagles play. I tell you, Jack, I'd hate to be a defensive lineman on the Washington Redskins team today because Randall Cunningham, boy, he can drive you crazy. He can get you tired in a hurry. He's a scrambler. He's a mover. He makes things happen. He's a very exciting young player. We'll have to wait a while to see him because the Redskins have won the toss and they'll receive. Paul McFadden will kick off. The referee there is Chuck Heberling. And the deep man for the Redskins is Ken Jenkins. He's averaged 24 yards plus per kickoff return. So we'll get an early idea about this sputtering Washington Redskin offense, and it has them concerned over here. It's unusual to come to Washington or talk to the Washington players and people and have them so concerned about their offensive personality. They have a record of one and one. The Eagles are 0 and 2, and McFadden hoops it away. And Jenkins goes to it, and it goes out of bounds, and so. The Eagles already assure themselves of a kickoff return by the Redskins because they'll have to kick off from the 30-yard line. This kicker, by the way, is a powerful booter. He's kicked two field goals this year, one of 45 and the other of 50 yards. But the poor Eagles haven't scored a touchdown all season. You know, I was on the field with him before the game, Jack, and talked to him and asked about kicking on synthetic turf compared to kicking on grass, which he's kicking on today. He said, you know, usually I'd much, much rather kick on synthetic turf, but the grass is so beautiful here that this is not going to be a problem. I like it very, very much. And he also said he's kicking, he's going to kick off into the, with the wind. So that's where he's kicking right now. And it was 1980 when the Eagles last won here. And the two teams split last season. Jenkins now inside is 10 and comes to the ball at the... 15-yard line, 20, 25, 33-yard line, and that's where Tysman and company will go to work. And here are the lineups, offensively and defensively. Tysman is John Riggins as the lone setback. Art Monk and Calvin Muhammad, the wide receivers. Two tight ends, Don Warren and Clint Didier. Their offensive line, the Hogs, they call them, are anchored by Rick Donnelly in the center, Joe Jacoby and Russ Grimm on the left side, Ken Huff and Mark May on the right side. A downfield tackle made by John Good, the new tight end of the Eagles. And the Redskins are at their 33. Motion by Monk. And a fake to Riggins, a pass to Monk at the sideline, good yards. And the tackle was made at the 41-yard line by Herman Edwards. The defensive alignment for the Eagles. Byron Darby in place of Tom Struthers at left hand. Ken Clark, the nose guard. And Greg Brown on the right side. Their linebackers, Wilkes is their best. Reichenbach, Griggs, and Cobb. They're still missing Jerry Robinson. And they're missing Dennis Harrison. And in the backfield, young Edwards, Ellison, Hopkins. Hopkins, the big hitter. They have eight great defensive backs on this Eagles club. And it is second down and three. Motion by Didier. Here's Riggins. Didier with a block. First down, Riggins. 
over the left side, typical Washington offense. Jack, that time they were an unbalanced line to the right side. Joe Jacoby went from his left tackle position to the right tackle position outside of Mark May. And Don Warren, number 85, played his position on the left side. They come back to the weak side. Here you see Riggins. And uh, they get a good block at the point of attack. Don Warren does a good job of blocking, and he gets a nice piece of yardage on the first play from an unbalanced line to the right side. Reichenbach made the tackle at the Washington 48-yard line. And a wobbly pass was batted down. He tried to get it downfield, and Greg Brown came in and whacked Theisman, and it's second down 10. I think uh, that first pass was thrown in front of Herman Edwards. Is that significant? I think it is because I think he's very deep conscious. He's a very cagey veteran. Uh, is very careful not to get anybody behind him. He plays about nine yards deep, as do both corners. So it's very obvious that they're going to try to do a little business in front of the defensive backs whenever they can, and especially on first and ten. Three wide receivers, Monk and Muhammad to the left. Monk in motion for Didier, the other wide receiver. Guys from the screen to Riggins. It's read well, and down he goes. Very, very good work. On the linebacker, first of all, Gary Cobb. He didn't stop the play, but he allowed Anthony Griggs to do so. Anthony Griggs, number 58, really did a super job of reacting to the screen pass. It looked like it was going to be a good call, but he responded to the inside and made the play and stopped it from being any kind of a big play or a successful play. It said they lost two, and it's third down and 12. Now they have seven defensive backs in the game, four linemen, seven defensive backs. Mama to the right along with Monk, Didier to the left. Griffin in the backfield, he's in the pass pattern. Heisman throws to the sideline and overthrows everybody. Incomplete, trying to get it to Muhammad. Boo say the fans because Heisman hasn't hit a stride yet this year. And Roy Nell Young was covering and the punter, Jeff Hayes, is into the game. You know, they haven't won a game yet, the Philadelphia Eagles, but I tell you, they're a very, very good defensive team. And if they can generate any kind of an offensive scheme here today, why, uh, this could be a very exciting, very interesting game. They're not very pleased with Hayes punting either. He has a pretty fair average, as you saw. A 41 plus, there's Evan Cooper. He's a threat with a 13 yard return average. Overall, Jack, they're not very pleased with, uh, with the phase, any phase of the specialty team. He's usually very good. Cronin snapped the ball, and Hayes thumped it to fair catch. He's called for and taken at the 14 yard line by Cooper. And you, you saw that new fair catch signal. You just can't stick your hand up in the air. You have to wave your hand. That was a 40-yard punt. Here's the lineup for the Eagles. Randall Cunningham, the exciting rookie, starting his second game. Ernest Jackson, formerly of San Diego, the running back. Kenny Jackson and Mike Quick, the wide receivers, and Michael Haddix and John Spagnola, tight ends. Vito Cav is out of the lineup. The offensive line, the rookie Kevin Allen, Steve Kenny, Mark Dennard, Ron Baker is playing. He didn't start last week. And Leonard Mitchell at the right tackle. Here's Cunningham and company from their 14. the running game going. Uh, Ernest Jackson is good for a couple. You almost do the Redskins a favor when you run against this big defensive line. It's a four-man front. With Charles Mann, Dave Butts, Darrell Grant, Dexter Manley. Nothing has changed there. The linebackers, a new starter on the left. Instead of Kaufman, it's Coleman. Okowitz in the middle and Malak. And the deep backs on the corners, Darrell Green and Vernon Dean. Green the fastest of them all. Tony Peters, the strong safety, and Curtis Jordan. Reset. One, one thing you know, when they run, they're not going to run to their right over Dave Butts. Here's the toss, and look at that coverage to Michael Haddix. And the Redskins defense was right there, and you really do a favor to the Redskins when you run the ball, Hank. Well, it's, yeah, especially, especially sideways because they respond so well. That time, talking about Butts, he plays left tackle, number 65, usually very strong, his stuff right at him. But even though the play went in, went outside, he was still coming from the inside, took a beautiful angle, and made the play. From the Philadelphia 18-yard line, third down and six. The five defensive backs in the game. Quick to the right along with Jackson. Aaron, the other wide receiver. First pass by Cunningham. Here he comes, he stumbles. He's trying for a first down, and he got it. 
He got it across the 25, and that's typical of the kid. He's 6'4", 195, tackled by Rich Malak. Even though he stumbled, he got the first Philadelphia first down. That's the one thing. You know, if you give him something up the middle, now watch the rush of the defensive lineman. They're taking an outside charge, and then Grant goes inside. Look at the middle area, pop wide open. He makes a move on Butts. Buck tries to grab him, but misses. Then he makes a move on Cherry. Cherry finally makes the tackle. He runs nine yards, but that's the kind of ability he has. He makes things happen. And it's out to the Eagle 26. Here comes Jackson. He ran very hard and went across the 30 out near the 33-yard line. Ernest Jackson was acquired in a trade with San Diego. Darrell Grant, Rich Malak made the defensive play for the Redskins. I think also when you play the Redskins, you're not going to run right very much, especially straight ahead. When you do run, you're going to try to run left. Dexter Manley is such a great pass rusher. I think people feel they should run at him to slow down the rush, and that's why they run left more so than they run right. Maddox and Hunter are in the backfield. Maddox is on a wing. And they stop things cold, don't they? And it was Manley and Butts right on top of Hunter, the rookie out of Tennessee State, making it third down and about four or five yards. Talking to Butts uh, at practice the other day, I asked about his condition and he, because he came in a little late. He says he feels great. He's completely well and healthy, and he's at a stage in his career where he's playing more consistently well than he's ever played in his whole career. Third and four. Now you have to wonder whether you have to defense against the pass or the running of the quarterback. You're right. But I would think that the Eagles would be much better throwing a lot more on first and ten as the game goes along. Here he comes, and they're in running room. He needs a block. He gets another first down. He's something. I tell you, he's something. Neil Okowitz made the tackle, and of course, we all know this kid is starting in place of Ron Jaworski. What did the coach, Marion Campbell, tell us about starting cutting in? We'll come right back to that in a minute. There's a replay. And watch the, the line. They got an inside stunt. And watch number 51, Coleman, gets caught on the inside. He takes the ball up in the air like he's going to throw it and runs for another big game in a first down. I tell you, he is really something. Okowitz, number 52, made the tackle. It's a first down from the 44. Fumble, and the Redskins had it. And they do have it. It was fumbled by the rookie, Herman Hunter. And Okowitz landed on the football. A missed exchange. There's a flag down. I thought maybe the Redskins were offside when the ball was snapped. And there is a flag. Let's see what they talk about. Ronnie Coleman may have been offside. I think it was Haddix. I think it might have been Michael Haddix, number 26. Illegal procedure, Jack. Let's see what they call, but that might have been who they called it on. I think they're going to get the ball back. The yeah, Eagles they... are going to get the ball back. Offside, defense. Number 51. Oh, first down. Yeah. It was Monty Coleman. He Monty, beat the snap. He sure did. And there's Joe Gibbs, and things of that sort have been happening to him this year. Three fumbles, five interceptions for the Redskins. Seven interceptions. A total of ten turnovers. Two games. First and five at the Philadelphia. Ball on first and ten, but they don't. They follow straight ahead, and Okowitz made the tackle. That, of course, Jack was a first and five situation. But talking about running a throw to pass on first down, I think as they go along, I'm I'm sure that we'll see more of that as we progress during the course of the contest. Haddock's got pretty good yards, though, Hank. He got seven. Yeah, there's they got a good surge from the offensive line. Steve Kenny, the left pack, the left guard. And Kevin Allen, they like him very much, especially on run responsibilities. He still has a long way to go pass blocking wise, but he comes off the ball very well. Second and three. And a high stepping back, Herman Hunter, the rookie, gets part of that three yards, short of a first down. Coleman made the tackle. Mel Kaufman has a pinched nerve in his neck. And that's why Coleman is starting at the left linebacker spot. Here's the head coach of the Eagles. What did yeah. he tell us about starting Cunningham well, and about the owner? We asked we asked him about uh, who made the decision about the quarterback situation. Did the owner or did he make it? He said, I definitely made the decision. And if I were made to make the decision by the owner, I would have quit right on the spot. Ron, Ron Jaworski is now calling Singer from the sideline. 
talk about him in a minute. Third and one and a first down run. Good penetration. Olkowitz was coming on the play, but he ran right by Ernest Jackson. He got a first down. I talked to Jaworski before the game, and I said, how'd your week go? He said, they went fine. He said, I'm disappointed that I'm not playing, but I'm going to do everything I possibly can to help the young quarterback and help this team win. And it's a great attitude, and I think it typifies the unselfish attitude of Ron Jaworski, who has been such an outstanding quarterback for the Eagles for such an extended period of time. This is a good drive, isn't it? It certainly is, and it's sticking to him very well. And a first down at the Redskins, 41. And the fake to Jackson in the pass. And it's wide open, isn't it? To the other Jackson, down inside the 20 to Kenny Jackson. And Curtis Jordan made the hit. There's your first down throw, Hank. That was a double zone. That was a zone defense that time. And Kenny Jackson, number 81, no. Yeah, that's right. Kenny Jackson, look, he's got time to throw the ball. He anchors between the defensive back. And Curtis Jordan finally makes the tackle. But he squats right in that open area, and a ball is thrown like a spread on a trolley line, and they have a first down. 22-yard pickup. Quick goes to the right. Parity to the left. Tight end Spagnola on the right side. Here is a delay to Haddix. Bounces outside and gets yards inside the 15-yard line. A few missed tackles by the Redskins. Curtis Jordan finished it off on Herman Hunter. Good run by Hunter. Well, that was a misdirection play, a counter play with both the right guard and the right tackle pulling on the play. And he takes a counter step to the right side to give the lineman enough chance to get out in front. And uh, they popped up in a nice hole, plus the fact that he ran right through some tackles. And Curtis Jordan, number 22, finally made the tackle. It's second and five. Hunter is a setback, a toss. Look out, kid. And he goes. Malak, but right on top of him. Malak fought off the block and did not miss on the tackle. Third and long. Malat was blitzing on the play, number 57, watching. And he comes through there, gets penetration. And uh, Kevin Allen, the left tackle, number 72, looks like he was trying to block him. But he missed him, didn't get out there quick enough, and really didn't get out there and get a good enough angle. Third and 10 as a result. Extra defensive back, Cherry is in there for the Redskins. Is to the right, Jackson to the left. Look out! A flag goes down as Cunningham ran and was dropped by Dexter Manley, number 72. Second flag of the game, procedure against the Eagles. It may be declined, and the Eagles will try a field goal. The boy Haddix was wide open on the play, he didn't have a chance to seek him out and get the ball to him. Dexter Manley good, got good pressure. And I talked to Chuck. Illegal formation offense, six men on the line. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. What's wrong with six men on the line? <laughs> Nothing if they don't catch it. You got to have seven, right? You got to have seven. Or right. eight, or nine, or ten, but you can't have less than seven. Jaworski holding, 42-yard drive from McFadden. He thumps it through, and the underdog Eagles take the lead here. And it's three to nothing. They're two touchdown underdogs, but the Eagles are on top. 41-yard field goal. It's warm and muggy here in Washington, and things may be hot for the Redskins. That running game is going pretty well for the Eagles. It really is, and I think the important thing, Jack, is they're really running away from butts, which is obvious, and they're making things happen straight ahead and doing a good job of coming off the line of scrimmage. Both Steve Kenny, Kevin Allen, and also Mark Dinner. And here is McFadden kicking off to Ken Jenkins. Redskins had to punt the last time they had the football. Well, the Eagle defense got it for the offense, and they picked up three points. There is Jenkins. That's what he did previously today. Anytime you're ready, Chuck. Discussion along the sideline. We have a couple of scores of other games. The Giants jump out in front of St. Louis in the Meadowlands, seven to nothing, first quarter. And Dallas ahead of the visiting Cleveland Browns, three to nothing in the first quarter. Now we're ready, and away we go. Steve, he's shy 
has the 25-yard line. How, uh, Hank, are the Redskins going to make use of both Riggins and Rodgers? I think the important thing is, really, they, they're going to use Riggins as much as they possibly can, but the great thing about it is, you know, he's been hurt in the past, and he's had to play hurt because he felt an obligation to the team. We talked to him yesterday, that's exactly what he said. Now he doesn't feel he has to play. If he's not ready to play, Rodgers will fill in for him, and he does an extremely good job. There's a toss to Riggins. And he comes across the 25, out near the 28. Both Rodgers and Riggins have been doing great work for the Redskins, and their accomplishments are about equal. Gary Cobb made that tackle. Look at this. Couldn't be more even, could it? No, you talk about balance. Look at the balance. Both rushes for 28 yards, 128 to 25, 4, 6, and 4, 5. You couldn't ask for better balance than that. Riggins picked up three. up look how much do you weigh we said what did he say he said i weigh myself twice a year and i don't know what i weigh <laughs> here's a draw he weighs quite a bit now with eagles hanging on to him it's going to be third down and long and byron darby starting at the left defensive end spot in place of tom struthers who has a bad ankle made that tackle struthers can play today by the way uh, the other great thing talking to uh john riggins we asked about his running Running and following his good offensive lineman, especially Jacoby and Grimm, and he said, you know, I have one uh, rule of thumb, and that is to follow the three-way, three-way over 66 and 68. Don't take any back road, just follow the three-way. Griffin is in the backfield on third down. Seven defensive backs. Over the middle and tipped. And that was Wes Hopkins. He got his hands up and knocked it down, and the Redskins have to punt again, and what's the matter? Mr. Theisman is hot. What role does Hopkins play in their backfield for the Eagles? I think he's probably one of the most unheralded guys in the National Football League. I think he's a definite all-pro pro bowler. I think he should be on the Pro Bowl team. He should have been last year. He's a terrific player, and he was involved in the coverage on that last play. Jeff Hayes punting for the second time. Evan Cooper back to get it. Theisman, by the way, is one out of five. And the Eagles leading three to nothing. We'll get the ball back. Oh, what a dandy kick. And it drives Cooper way back to the 16. Watch it. He's out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. So the Eagles get it for the second time. There are no flags that I see. And the tackle was made by Rick Walker. Of the Redskins. That's one of the few times you see a kick return with no flags. We're in the first quarter, 2.56 remaining in the period. That was, well, there was a flag. There is a flag. That was a 54 yard punt. I didn't think that was ever coming down. What, the flag? <laughs> no, the ball. No. 2.56 left in the first quarter. The Eagles may want him to kick it over because he's not going to kick much better than he did, 54 yards. Apparently, they have the choice. Referee Chuck Heverling trying to square things away, talking to Spagnola. Bring it back. He said. Yeah, he pummeled that ball, and uh, it just makes sense to make him try to kick it again. Very rarely will he have that kind of a kick back to back. Especially when you have illegal a threat. receiver down the field, number 78 on the offense, fourth down. One of the Redskins was too exuberant. That was Dean Hamill, the rookie out of Tulsa. We have some scores of other games as they set up to punt again. Pittsburgh ahead of Houston, 7 to nothing. Malone, a 25-yard pass to Lips. First quarter. Denver's atop of Atlanta in the first quarter. And San Diego by three over Cincinnati. It's not as cold there today as it was when San Diego played that title game, is it? It not be this early in the season. It is. We really got a scoop, Jack. Ronan will snap the ball. Low snap. Jeff Hayes handles it. Another good kick. And Cooper took it on the 25. Got away from two, but not the third. A one-yard return. Very good coverage, and the Eagles have been crying about their special teams coverage. Pete Cronin, who snapped the ball, made the tackle. Eagles have it at their 26 after a 50-yard punt. Eagles lead 3-0. Got a good picture of Joe Gibbs on the sideline, and uh, 
We had a nice visit with Joe the other day, and he was very concerned about two things, naturally, just like you'd imagine. Very concerned about his specialty teams and very concerned about the offense. He hoped that uh, they would go into this game and be a lot sharper and do a lot better. So far, they haven't done much, but it's early in the game. But uh, that was his concern, and after this early in the game, he has, has to still be concerned. He's concerned about his kid who's playing the high school quarterback, too. He's uh, worried about his health. <laughs> um, from the 26, Ernest Jackson, the tailback, and they give it to him. He unloads, but they can't move him out as Neil Okowitz and Darrell Grant and Dave Butts were all there. Butts is not always anchored at the left tackle spot. He'll move around, move inside once in a while. But overall, overall, uh, I've never seen him cover so much territory as I have seen him cover in this game so far. He normally is very, very aggressive and stuff right at him, but he's made plays to his outside and also his inside and is covering a lot of real estate. Second down and eight for the Redskins with Randall Cunningham. Coming outside is Herman Hunter. Turns the corner and has a first down out to the 37-yard line. Curtis Jordan was the tackler. Number 11 pick, Herman Hunter. His running average before today was one yard per carry. That was that counterplay again with both the guard and the tackle pulling on the left side, both Kevin Allen and Steve Kenny, and they got around Charles Mann, number 71, and that's why he was able to succeed in making yardage on the play. Two minutes left in the first quarter. First down at their 37 for Philadelphia. Wiggins to the right, Jackson to the left, the other Jackson really getting off the ball. Crosses the 40-yard line, and he picked up five yards. And let's go to New York from Brent Musburger. Jack, the Cardinals have just tied the New York Giants at seven. It's their favorite combination, Neil Omax to Roy Green. You live back in St. Louis. You know Green hasn't practiced much for the Cardinals, has he? No, Brent, he's had a bad foot, and he had a very inactive week. But he's busy on Sunday, second down, and racing with the ball is Hunter. Where he started. It's going to be third down and nine. They all came pouring through there. There again, Jack, they run the counter play, the same one they ran to the right side a moment ago. They run to the left with Ron Baker and Leonard Mitchell uh, pulling on the play. But uh, Olkowitz and Grant were there, 52 yeah, watch, and 77. Watch, watch the right. Watch the right tackle pull on the play. But look at the reaction. Look at the reaction. The lot number 57 is in there, makes a play along with Dexter Manley, number 72. Third and eight. Look at Quick. Can't get there. He was wide open, wasn't he? He ran by the speech around the corner, Darrell Green. But Cunningham overthrew him for six. I couldn't, and I couldn't see that time, Jack, whether he made any kind of a move on Green because Green responds very quickly to what he sees and usually double moves are very effective. I don't know whether he did that or not. I didn't get a chance to see it. Here's the first punt of the day by Mike Horan. He's had plenty of practice in the first two games with 14 and there's his average. And back to get it is Jenkins at his 20. Left-footed kicker hangs it high. He thumped it. Jenkins is driven back. Whoa! He got away, and now he's down at about the 10-yard line. He'd have been wise to leave that ball alone, eh? He lost. He lost uh, where he was. He never should have tried to make the play, Jack. A, a rule, definitely. You know, if it's inside the 10-yard line, let it go and bounce, and it'll go into the end zone. Percentage-wise, you get it on the 20. Redskins are at their nine. The head coach of the Eagles, Marion Campbell, liked that 57-yard punt by Mike Horan. Tackled by Waters, he was shaken off and walked off the field, and the Redskins have the ball for the third time. They're at their nine, and here comes Riggins. And he is out near the 14-yard line. And we have 25 seconds left in the first quarter with the Eagles leading three to nothing. Tackled by Anthony Griggs and Gary Cobb, who slid off a block. And Clint Didier, number 86, got a good block that time and provided uh, John with some good running room on the inside. 
I think the Redskins are going to take the time, let it crank down. We'll have the gun the end of the first quarter, and they'll have second and five from their own 14 when we start the second period. The only scoring, a 41-yard field goal by Paul McFadden of the Eagles. There's Riggins, who just got five yards. They call these cheerleaders the Redskin Hits. A great marching band, and this is the 144th consecutive sellout here at IFK Stadium. Second and five. From the 14 with Riggins. Nope. We got about a yard and a half. Had to work hard for that in the arms of Mike Reichenbach and Harry Cobb. And there again. Oh, excuse me, Jack. I was going to say Cobb number 50 came over from Detroit, and they like it. They really do. He's done a good job for them, and uh, that time they ran the, the play that they like very much, counter Trey, a counter play with Riggins carrying the ball and both the left tackle and the left guard, Russ Grimm and Joe Jacoby, pulling and trying to make a play, but they reacted very well, talking about the Eagles. They put some defensive backs in there, don't they? Yeah. Fouls and... they got seven of them in there. Heisman on third and four, and drop. And dropped by Gary Clark, the rookie out of James Madison, and the Redskins are going to have to punt again. Hank, when you come on the field, you're a 14-point favorite. You ought to be able to take charge, but that hasn't happened, has it? No, it hasn't, and uh, that time they got exactly what they wanted. They had Elber Fowles, number 29, covering Clark man for man. He made a move to the inside, and he just dropped the ball. He should have caught the ball, but... Uh, didn't and of course that's the way they've been playing offensively just have not made anything happen talking about the Redskins and of course you have to give a lot of credit to the defense of the Philadelphia Eagles they're playing great football this is the third punt by Jeff Hayes and Evan Cooper is at his 45 and they ought to come out of here with pretty good field position oh, snap by Cronin there's the kick oh another day hung that one out to dry took it back at the 32-35. 40 yard line is Cooper and 44. Pretty gutsy return to the 44 yard line. And he was tackled by Dean Hamill, the Redskin rookie. The Eagles leading, have the ball. Everything else is just a light. U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by National Car Rental, you deserve national attention. His cheerleaders trying to whoop up a little uh, action from the crowd, Hank, but the Redskins' play has silenced the crowd. It's usually a thin over here in the stadium, isn't it? It really is, and of course they had, they're just getting off to a slow start again, and uh, you have to give an awful lot of credit to the Eagles for playing like they're playing right now. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this young quarterback, I tell you, he can make things happen. Quick is to the left, Jackson to the right, first down pass, Cunningham. Sets up, throws on the run, and it's wide open, and caught by Spagnola inside the 30, 25, 20, 19 yard line. The coach, and Spagnola caught in the tackle by Oakley. The coach, Marion Campbell, told us about Cunningham. He said there's only one guy who has a quicker release than he, and he plays down in Miami. There's Vernon Dean, the cornerback, slow in getting up. And watch this again. Look at the four man rush. Baker, they, they double team. Look at all the middle, right up the middle. They, they double team butts. And he's able to go right up the middle and find the Spagnola on the sideline. He makes the catch, runs good. Once he makes the reception, he picks up a first down. But now the Redskins at the 20 yard line stop that running play by Haddix uh, after well, a yard and a half. Cunningham, by the way, threw for 35 yards to Spagnola. He's two for three for 57 yards so far in this game. Tony Peters and Vernon Dean made that last tackle, so Vernon Dean is all right after being shaken up. Second and eight. Jackson and Haddix in the backfield. Bring him to throw. Outside in the corner, quick and complete. Threw the ball out of bounds. Green was covering. Indianapolis jumps ahead of the favored and undefeated Lions, seven to nothing, in the first quarter. New England is ahead of winless Buffalo, three to nothing in the second quarter. New Orleans out in front of Tampa Bay, seven nothing first quarter. And Atlanta's caught Denver. They're seven seven in the first quarter. Cincinnati goes ahead of San Diego. Messias in the touchdown pass to Collingwood. And Dallas ahead of Cleveland, ten to nothing second quarter. Out of the shotgun on third and. 
defensive backs for the Redskins. The blitz is on. The pass outside and incomplete to Kenny Jackson. Timing effort, but incomplete. Watch that pretty good, pretty good penetration that time. Number 65 and got his hands up in the air. And boy, I tell you, when he sets and throws the ball, he throws it like a like a frozen rope. Watch the pressure. Watch Manley coming from the outside. And here comes Malott up the slot. Malott, number 57, blitzing on the play and puts pressure on the quarterback. 36-yard try by McFadden. Kicked one of 41 earlier. And he makes it six to nothing. In favor of the Eagles with 12-33 left in the half. So now the Redskins trail by six. Well, there's the Eagles offense, Hank. Yeah, he kicked two field goals last week. He's got two already so far. He's got a great temperament, you know. really has for a kicker. I talked to him before the game, as I mentioned. And, you know, he feels good about kicking on grass and everything's positive, everybody, everything's strong. He's got a really a great attitude. Patton kicking off to Ken Jenkins. Patton with field goals today of 41 and 36 yards. Jenkins takes this one on the 7. 10, coming right. Slowed down. Runs the man. 20 yard line. Good block. 30, 35. Out to the 30. Well, let's see where he stepped out. 37 yard line. Great return by the Redskins. A eagle coverage man was just outrun, and now we have an offside call. And that's against the Eagles on the kickoff, but I think the Redskins will decline it. Andre Waters and Albert Powells made the tackle on Jenkins. Offside on the kicking team. The penalty will be refused. It's first down. Ball is at the Washington 37. Well, plenty of football today on CBS, including this one, Hank, before a sellout crowd in the Coliseum. I'd like to see that one. Oh, that's going to be a great football game. And, of course, the uh, 49ers won in preseason. But the Raiders uh, have to generate some kind of an offense. They're going to do it. They better start doing it today. Those two teams have won four out of the last five Super Bowls. Here is... Monk. Play action and the pass to Monk. Out of bounds at the 38 of Philadelphia. Knocked out by Wes Hopkins. Boy, that guy can really get loose. And that was a crossing pattern. The play action fake. They hold the lineman in good shape, and Monk comes over from the left side all the way over to the right side. How many did he catch last year? Last year he caught 106. Wonder he doesn't have sore hands. That ball is to the Eagle 38. George Rogers in the backfield now. There's George. To the 30. He got about nine. Wes Hopkins with another tackle. And now the Eagles find themselves reeling, and the Redskins are playing like a two touchdown favorite. A trap. Watch the trap lock, a great trap lock on Anthony Griggs. And he pops through there in good shape. Russ Grimm also makes a good block at the point of attack. Didier leading the blocking for him. First down for the 22. Russ Hopkins with another tackle. Where did this electricity come from? Well, they're getting off the ball a lot better, Jack. They're controlling the line of scrimmage now, and that always makes a difference. Running backs can run a lot better when there's some place to run. And he runs where Riggins runs, over behind Jacoby and Grimm, right? Yeah, he takes the freeway. Okay, for a fellow listed as a tight end, that Goodyear does a lot of things. Monk in motion, Rogers in the backfield. Goodyear on a wing. Pass play first down. Theismann in zone. Monk incomplete. And strong play in the corner by Roynell Young. Roynell Young didn't take the bait. He was trying to run a square out and up. But the Young gave him, gave him enough of a cushion. He had no chance whatsoever to make the play. Joe made up his mind in advance. That's where he's going to throw the football. But he had no chance to really make that completion to Art Monk. Second down and 10 at the Philadelphia 23. And they're tough against the pass, as those figures show you, only 40%. It's hard to get deep on, the, on this team. It's a lot easier to throw in front and in the middle than it is to throw deep. Here the up back. It's on Rodgers. He wrestled down on a strong tackle. 
Boy, there was a very strong play. Greg Brown, number 98, was underneath the pile to make the play. There's Greg Brown. Watch Greg Brown, number 98. Come around the outside. Nobody touched him. He went right around the block and made the tackle. Well, that's a good picture. Lost one. Third and 11. Where are you going to throw it, Joe? Where are you going to throw it, Joe? And he threw it away. On third down. Trying to get it downfield to Muhammad, and there was Herman Edwards. They had seven defensive backs in the game, and they had everybody faded. Joe wisely he had no place to throw the ball whatsoever. Couldn't even run with it because they contained him well, and he wisely threw the ball out of the ballpark and up in the bleachers. So we shall have a 42-yard field goal try by Mark Mosley. He's one out of one this year. One of the few straight-ahead kickers. Dysman will hold, so you always have to watch for a fake. And Mosley. So it's a 6-3 game. 56 left, but the Redskins got hot. The Eagles shut him down, held him to three. A uh, good pitcher, Reggie White, who will be playing for the Philadelphia Eagles next week. The Minister of Defense played in the United States Football League for the Memphis Showboats. Really did a super job. He's a big guy, 6'5", 285, and they played his collegiate football at the University of Tennessee, and he's a great mimic. You ought to see him do Muhammad Ali and uh, Roger Dangerfield. Terrific. Here is the kick by Jeff Hayes, and the ball goes out of bounds. So Hayes misfires, and he'll kick to Herman Hunter from the 30-yard line with 9.53 left. Five-yard penalty and a re-kick. I said Roger instead of Rodney because he's such a good athlete. It looks like in those commercials. Oh, danger field? Yeah, remind me of Starbuck. <laughs> University of Texas won last night. They won their game uh, over Missouri, 21 to 17. And even though Stanford lost to Oregon last night, the Stanford quarterback, John Pay, P-A-Y-E, threw four touchdown passes. So that action will be good at 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday here on CBS Sports. Texas and Stanford, two great universities. Talk about a team coming off the bus throwing the football. Boy, Stanford always has a great, great passing attack. Hayes boots it. Get into it very well, and it right to the goal line. all the way out to the 35. Well, that's what the Redskins have been moaning about, their breakdowns on their special teams, and it broke down again there, Hank, with a kick like that. Anthony Jones made the tackle. They should have hemmed him up much closer. Especially, they're trying to do that by kicking the ball to, to one side of the field rather than right down the middle to give them just one place to go. They're converging, but they're still not making a play. And Wayne Severe, who I talked to yesterday, who was in charge of the specialty teams, Boy, he was very, very concerned about how poorly they were doing on coverage of kickoff returns. They changed some people around, didn't they? Yes, they did. On the 35, Randall Cunningham. And he delays the ball to Michael Haddock. He's delayed even more by the Redskins defense. That first down pass has not been seen very often, Hank. No, it really hasn't been. But they, they started uh, very well running the ball, especially to their left. They haven't done much running sideways, but straight ahead running has been very effective. And evidently they feel se secure about that and they continue to try to do it. Well, Grant made the tackle. Garrity comes in and goes left. Mike Quick is to the right. Fumble. And a flag is down. Well, the center held the ball as Cunningham pulled away, and that'll be a procedure call. There's the rookie Allen into it with some of the Redskins. Kevin Allen, the, the number one pick out of Indiana, number 72. What happened there, Chuck? False start, quarterback, five yards, replay the down. I talked to Manley uh, the other day about Kevin Allen. He said, listen, he's a good-looking young football player. He's going to be uh, an outstanding guy. He still has to learn a lot about pass protection, but from run standpoint, he's tough. He's got an opponent today in Manley. Yeah, he's, he's a terrific football player and a great guy to talk to. Terrific attitude. Second and 15. And 
with Jackson in the backfield. He runs. Out across to the 42-yard line, making a third down and about three yards to go. Curtis Jordan tackled him. They were all playing pass, weren't they? Well, that time they had Daryl Grant uh, on the nose of the center, which they don't do very often. They got an undershift or an overshift. And man, number 71, had a chance to make the tackle but blew the tackle. And for that reason, you're not going to get Jackson with just a scrape uh, trying to knock him down. You better get your arms around him because he's a good, strong, heavy-legged runner. They're down at a long two. Come on, Hunter Michael Haddix in the backfield. Third and two. Uh-oh. And they sack him on third down. That's the second time they've nailed the quarterback. Manley got in there along with Grant. Manley and Grant. Watch Dexter Manley. Going to the outside, going to the outside, and then finally pushes him off and comes to the inside and makes the play on uh, the quarterback. That's the second sack today by the Redskins in their eighth of the year. You know, sometimes a young tackle like Kevin Allen, he thinks his job is over once he forces the defensive end to the outside, relaxes a little bit, and the next thing you know, well, here he comes to the backside and makes the play. That's what happened there. That's what you call holding your block, right? That's right. Here's yep. the punt by Horan, the left-footed kicker, and, boy, we've seen some good punting today. Jenkins is back to get it. And you better leave it alone, fellas. It dies at the 15-yard line. That'll give Horan good net yardage. You know, they miss Nelms on this Washington team, don't they? I think any time that you have a uh, an aggressive punt returner like Nelms, you've got to miss him some, because he's a guy that made things happen and gave your specialty teams a tough dimension that you like. Well, I've taken my coat off, loosened my ties, Stram will never do that. You don't care if you're in the desert, do you? Well, this, this uh, sweater I got is air-conditioned, Jack, so it's nice and cool. <laughs> <laughs> Eagles playing them pretty tough, Hank, and they figured to play anybody tough this year. Well, I they? tell you, they get any, any kind of an offense generated here this afternoon, and where they're playing defensively, they're going to create a lot of problems for people. And this young quarterback, I tell you, he's got a great future. They've nailed him a couple of times on sacks, and here's a fellow who's had a great career, Joe Theismann. His day-to-day -day for Theismann is not so hot at the outset. He started off one out of five. He's done pretty good coverage downfield. He's had to throw a couple away, and he is three out of nine for 31 yards. They start from their 16 with Jordan Rodgers in there. Down, did it? Wes Hopkins tackled it. Here's a replay. Watch Rogers running to his left. Good blocking at the point of attack. He bounces to the outside. Interesting talking to him yesterday. He always carries the ball in his right arm, whether he runs right or left. That time he ran left and he still had it in his right arm. He said, I do not like to change because I'm afraid of fumbling, and for that reason. I think he runs better to the right than he does to his left because he's got the ball away from pressure. Here he comes again. He used a good stiff arm and moved out to the 30-yard line. He got three yards on the play, and Ray Ellis tackled him. He's the strong safety. There was a great illustration right there. So he get, had the ball away from pressure and was able to use his left arm uh, for a straight arm and, uh, and get a shot at the would-be tackler when he's running to the other direction with a ball in that right arm he can't do that and he also creates a lot of fumbles here's didier out in front gets a good block on ellis but ellis finally bounces off the block and makes the tackle rogers told us he likes the coaching here doesn't he yeah he does he's very very excited about that very excited about being here here he comes again and he is nailed after a gain of about a yard bringing about third down I think the other thing that's interesting about Rodgers is he's been running for so long from the I formation, and normally he's about seven or eight yards deep from the I formation. They started him off in a two-point stance when he first got here, but he couldn't see. He has to be put up in a two-point stance so he could see better. He was initially about five yards deep. That's not deep enough for him. He's got to be back about six or seven. He's about six now. Third down and six. Seven defensive backs again. Griffin in the backfield, in the pass pattern, catches the ball on the screen. In the first half, he 
the move. First down across the 45. Keith Griffin out of Miami. Boy, Michael. Russ Grimm got a great block that time, too, Jack, on the screen pass. Number 68 pulling to his left. Watch Russ Grimm. Number 68 going out to the left. Watch. There's the block he makes on Herman Edwards, and he provides running room for Keith Griffin, who comes up the field and gets a first down on the play. But the key block was made by Russ Grimm, number 68. And perhaps you saw Rick Donnelly also, the center with a good block. Up to the 47, first down. Riggins, please look here. And running room. shot but missed. Uh, he cuts back nicely. Joe Weisman, and he's in the process of getting hit and fell down just in time. 25 yard gain. Here's the get to Rogers. He's taken down after a gain of three. I say this for Theisman. When he saw Wes Hopkins coming, he went underground, didn't he? That's right. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he doesn't have that good business mind and uh, that ability to think quickly for nothing because he reacted terrifically well there. George Use good judgment. Rogers just got three and Griffin comes back in. Four minutes remaining in the half. 6-3 the score. The Eagles on top. Redskins on the big run by Theismann are at the Philadelphia 25. Occasion, uh, maybe we might use it in here close. We'll look, take a look, look, see if they do it. Monk in motion. He just got it away. It's incomplete and almost picked off. Almost nailed by Herman Edwards. He had Hopkins right on top of him. Watch the blitz right up the middle. Hopkins coming through there in the gap. That's a sight control pattern meaning that any time the safety man is gone, they're going to run an inside pattern, which they did. And uh, that time, Herman Edwards almost came up with the interception, number 46. Eisman hasn't had such a hot day. Four ought to be loving for 47 yards. It's third down. And 37. Using those seven defensive backs is no picnic yet. He drives it out here on the screen again to Griffin. Very close, and he does have a first down. As I view it from here, Evan Cooper with a final hit. That's a first down screen pass, if I'm right. Here they send uh, Didier in motion to the left side. Uh, Monk was in motion to the left side. Here's a screen pass. Watch this. Puff misses the block on Hopkins, overruns it. also is out there in front but doesn't make a block. Why not? He was too high and couldn't make the adjustment on the tackle. First down at the Eagles 16 yard line. Rogers the tailback. Look at all the room in front of Edwards over there. Didier with a block and Rogers inside the 15 yard line in the arms of Ken Clark. Clark number 71 is a fellow we can talk about. He really does a great job of anchoring that three-man front for the Eagles. He's another guy that doesn't get nearly the recognition that he deserves. He's really doing a terrific job. Reminds me an awful lot of Curly Cuff, the great player we had at Kansas City. He's, um, he's very hurried, much like him from a physical standpoint, even wears the same number. And he weighs about the same 270. They've got him listed at 255, but he really is 270. Over there on the left side on Edwards. Second down and seven. That's where Tyson is looking. He takes short. He throws outside incomplete. We saw the linebacker Cobb with very good coverage on George Rogers. That that was really a bad move that time, Jack, because Edwards was back there so deep that there's no way in the world he's going to let you beat him on any kind of an individual pattern. The time, the way to throw that pattern would be to throw in front of or inside of 
the defensive back. You don't even, yeah, you don't see him in the picture at all. Look at how deep he is. All he had to do was throw the ball in front of him, and it would have been a big game. They try to throw deep, and Muhammad Gritty, Calvin Muhammad Gritty, did not run a very good pass. Seven defensive backs again. Third down and seven. It may work again. He didn't get first down. It's fourth down, so the Redskins may just try to tie the game with a field goal. Herman Edwards, the tackle on Griffin. He reminds you a little bit of Joe Washington, who's no longer with the Redskins here. Yeah, he does. And, uh, you know, Washington was such a valuable guy because he ran the option pattern so well in this territory, meaning he ran the option on a linebacker. Depending on how the linebacker played, he would run inside or outside. He was very effective with it. Two minutes left and a half and a timeout. The ball's at the 10. They're going to try a field goal when we resume. She was a pretty interesting thing, Jack. You know, Mark Mosley, in the first 10 years of his career, his percentage was 62% on field goal attempts. But at that time, he kicked field goals and also kicked off. In 1982, they changed the responsibility, eliminated the kickoff, and now is just kicking field goals. And since that time, He's increased his percentage from 62 to 78 percent, so it makes a difference, evidently, because now Hayes kicks off instead of Mosley. 27-yard field goal ties at 6-6 with 158 left in the half, and so Mosley has kicked 27 yards and 41 yards, and McFadden 41 and 36. And there's Joe Gibbs talking it over with Heisman. And at the half, we're going to be joining Brent Musburger. Dick Vermeil is in the studio today. Scores and highlights. And Irv Cross with the story after the glory. Talk about Hacksaw Reynolds and Dan Buns. Two players who have prepared quite differently for life after football. It'll be an interesting story to see what happened to Hacksaw, right? I wonder if he's going to cut up any more cars. Marion Campbell, great defensive coach. Yeah, he really is. And he's got a good perspective on things. He really has. And he, you have to admire him for making that decision. He, I know he loves Jaworski, and it would just be like me doing the same thing to Lenny Dawson when he played for us. That's a tough decision. But, you know, you have to make that decision. Jaworski is still an excellent quarterback, and I'm sure he's going to wind up somewhere playing with somebody else and continue, continue to do a great job. But he had to make a decision, and he made it. And he did the same thing when he became the head coach of Atlanta. He brought in a young quarterback back by the name of Bartkowski, and uh, that was a dramatic change, too. Here's the kickoff to Herman Hunter. From a yard deep, he's going to try. 30-yard line before he's out of bounds. Once again, the Redskins can't be pleased about their coverage. And Barry Wilburn, number 45, the tackler. He's a good rookie out of Mississippi on this Redskin team. Now it's going to be interesting to see what kind of an approach they take here with 151 left uh, in the half. Uh, I think the Eagles have three timeouts left, don't they, Jack? Yes, they both do. They both do, and to see whether they're going to go into their two-minute offense or whether they're going to be conservative. The one thing they want to be careful of, they don't want to make a mistake here and provide the Redskins with an opportunity to get another score before the half. That's what happened to them last week in their game against the Rams. Well, they don't have three timeouts left now. They call one to make sure they make the best use of the final 146. There's Ted Marchabrota. What does he do with the Eagles? Well, he's the offensive coordinator, and he's, he was interested to talk to you before the game. I asked Ted about the approach offensively, whether they throw the ball very much on first and ten. He said, no, I don't think we will. We probably will try to establish to run, especially try to go at them, and as the game progresses, we'll respond accordingly. And uh, there he is talking to Spagnola. Uh, who was really a very outstanding tight end and also the young quarterback Cunningham. And in the back of the picture, Ken Iman, a longtime offensive lineman for the Rams. That's Iman all the way just behind Ted Marchabrota. Chewing the gum and scratching his nose. 146 left in the half. We have the 49ers and the Raiders coming up next on CBS Sports. They're each one and one, and they'll play before 92,000 people today in the Coliseum. I and, bet you Al Davis is chewing his nails today. Yeah, he said, never mind the tickets and the money. What does he say? Just win, baby, and just win. win they won four out of the last five Super Bowls, those two teams. Here again, they got, they got uh, six defensive backs in the game. They've got to be careful they don't make a big mistake. The place that looks vulnerable is something in the middle. Over the middle, and 
and it is caught by Quick out to the 40, and that's the first down. He called it Hank, and it was Barry Wilburn, number 45, covering and tackling. Hurry up offense. One thing about throwing the ball in the middle, Jack, if you don't throw it at the numbers, there's always a chance for a ricochet and an intercepted ball because everybody's surrounding the ball, so you got to be very careful how you throw it. Cunningham out of Nevada, Las Vegas, hits Pagnola. That's another first down to the Washington 48. Tackle by Wilburn and Malott. I tell you, Cunningham looks a lot more decisive this week, and justifiably so, after a week of work with the number one team than he did a week ago. And in talking to him yesterday, he said, I said, what do you feel you have to improve on this week? He said, well, I have to get rid of the ball a little quicker. Uh, I was surprised to hear him say that because I didn't think he held it too long last week most of the time. But the, the timing and the execution of the pattern so far have been much, much better than they were a week ago. This is an Eagle timeout. They have one left, one fourteen left. Second quarter, an O'Donohue field goal has tied the Giants 10-10. And New England ahead of Buffalo 10-7 in the second quarter. Pittsburgh, another touchdown pass. Malone to Lips, 14 to nothing. Second quarter, two to Lips today. New Orleans ahead of Tampa Bay, 14 to three in the second period. And a tie game in the second quarter. Denver and Atlanta. Some good matchups today. Yeah, I really think Atlanta, once they get on track, I think they've got a good chance to surprise a lot of people and be a lot better football team than they started out to be so far. They have Liebenstein, Hamill, Beasley up front to help with the pass rush of the Redskins. And they've got a three-man rush, Jack, instead of the usual four-man rush of the Brooklyn linebackers. Look out, Dick. Cunningham doing all sorts of things. Needs a block for more yards. Look at him run. Look at him run. Look at him run. He is a thrill a minute to the 10. Just outside the 10 before Darrell Green caught him. And Tony Peters had a shot at him. But he faked him out of his shoestrings and on the play, on the run. And he looted him. And there's Monty Coleman. Hurt on the play. Hopefully nothing serious. But he got hurt on the play. He started today in place of Kaufman. <laughs> Cunningham is something there. 59 I, seconds left in the half. This is an injury timeout. I tell you, you talk about a guy that uh, can make things happen. Watch him again. See, they have a three-man line, and the linebackers, Coleman is blitzing on the play, goes beyond the play. He fakes out. He Peters. Fakes, Peters runs to the outside. Look at him. Uh, the way he carries that ball, look how loose it is. You think he's somebody would knock it loose from the backside. Quick got a good block for him. But Green finally got him from the backside, and in the process of falling down, he had enough composure to tuck the ball in to make sure he didn't fumble it. 37 yards on the play. He's rushed three times for 57 yards today. The partially balding fellow on the left, well, right behind March of Broda now, is Fred Bruni, the coach. He's out of our picture. There's Cunningham. What a great player he was at Ohio you started, State. You, uh, you're talking about Bruni. You started to say about Cunningham, it reminds you of another former quarterback. Yeah, he reminds me so much of Joe Gillum. And he Pittsburgh. really does. Yeah, Pittsburgh. And, of course, he said he's wearing number 12 because of Joe Namath. And he wears the... Uh, he says he even feels good about the fact that he's wearing green and white like Joe Namath. And he's always... He also has got a face mask like Joe Matt Namath, so he's very here's, sold on Joe. Here's Coleman out of Central Arkansas. He went to school there because his brother played there. Look at the arms on that fellow, Mike. Isn't that amazing? He didn't play high school football at all, went to college as a, as a walk-on and made the football team. And he loves to fish. Yeah, he's a bass fisherman, a professional bass fisherman. <laughs> he's been doing it for two years along with Charlie Taylor, and they've, I asked him if he won any tournaments. He said, we won one. I said, how much money did you win? I think he said 136 bucks. But he had to split it with the other guy. That's right, had to split it. High finance. Well, looks like the Eagles are going to be ahead at the half, barring the mistake. We're tied 6-6 with 59 seconds left in the half. Stuart Anderson replaces Coleman. This is not first and goal, it's first and 10. Cunningham brings it inside, and it is carried by Ernest Jackson down to the six. They still have a lot of time. They don't have to rush. And now a timeout is called by, well, the flag is down. That's what stops the clock. You know, Jack, the Philadelphia Eagles haven't scored a touchdown since the third quarter of last season. So if they score one here, it'll be the first time in a long time. Holding, 72, offense. Call against Kevin Allen. Repeat first down. And they're Marion Campbell. Well, they may not get the points here at the end of the half after all. They did the same thing against the Rams. They got the ball to the 10, they uh, to the 5, spiked the ball, took it back to the 10, 
And then they were called on a fumble, and they lost six points there. Raphael Cherry, who played quarterback at the University of Hawaii, is the fifth defensive back in there right now. Now they got six defensive backs. Second and 20. for the third time. They're going backwards. Got it in reverse march. They got it in reverse march. They started right outside the 10. They're at the 33. Stuart Anderson, the linebacker, blitzing on the play. Second and 32. They hope they got to hope they can get some of it back here. And the middle looks like it'd be vulnerable if they get the ball off. There's running room. Not now, though. And he throws it away. On second down. Dexter Manley, 72, get it again, providing good pressure. Barry Wilbur, number 45, involved in the play. He was covering Herman Hunter. There's Dexter Manley. These defensive linemen really get pooped chasing that guy, don't they? Oh, they do. I remember I mentioned it last week, but we played against Denver several years ago, a long time ago, really, and they had a a quarterback that ran all over the place and he really created a lot of problems in our big lineman boy you talked about needing the gas pipe after the game they needed it third and 32 the eagles with 12 seconds left have a timeout left they want to get a little closer for a field goal try and it's intercepted intercepted by will burn his first ever in pro football Covered that time, Jack, and he threw the ball right into double cover. The area to throw the ball really would have been in the middle, Jack. That's a vulnerable spot, but he threw it outside, and uh, Barry Wilburn, number 45, came up with the interception. To the Washington 35 with four seconds left, so it appears we're going to have a 6 6 score here at the half. Watch, watch Wilburn, 45, he gets a chuck, see, and then he comes in and plays short. The ball is thrown in front. He makes the interception. And Reedy gets a great jump on the ball and does a good job of bringing the ball back. They have possession on the 35. Michael Haddix made the tackle. Wilburn is a rookie out of Mississippi, number eight draft pick. First interception of his career. Now Tysner with four seconds left. He's going to throw the ball oh, deep yeah. downfield and see if something can happen. Jump ball, folks. Anybody want it? And intercepted by the Eagles with no time remaining. Intercepted by Ray Ellis. And we have a 6-6 score here at the half. Well, the Redskins dodged the bullet. They had first and 10 to go just outside the 10-yard line. I said it looked like the Eagles were going to take the lead at the half, but they blew it. Holding call and an interception. We're tied at the half. 6-6. The end of the first half, 6-6. Performance Revolution, an American revolution. Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. And by steel chainsaws, rugged, long-lasting, and tough. We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We do. Welcome back to New York. I'm Brad Musburger with Dick Vermeil. And first, a baseball note, because it's a sense of deja vu for New York Yankee fans. Early this morning, manager Billy Martin and one of his starting pitchers, Ed Whitson, got into a fight at the team's hotel in Baltimore. Now, according to witnesses, the two men had been drinking in the hotel bar. When an argument broke out, it soon escalated into an exchange of blows, even spilling out into the hotel lobby, where Whitson was seen kicking Martin in the groin. Martin suffered a broken right arm. He is wearing a cast in the dugout in the Yankee game against Baltimore today. And sources close to the team say that if Yankee owner George Steinbrenner fires Martin a fourth time, he will be replaced by Lou Pinella. Now in professional football, games in progress right now around the league. Indianapolis, their first home game. And Dick Vermeil, how noisy is it as we take a look at the highlights here of the Colts? Brent, I did a ball game there a year ago. And I'll tell you, when you're in the booth, you can't hear yourself think. Well, here is George Wansley with a big burst for the Colts. A little off-tackle play, just power. You can see the Colts are playing with great intensity today. This is a great piece of work by the front office of the Colts. Owen Gill was cut by Seattle, picked up by the Colts. 
He is the victim of that 45-man rule, and that's why Chuck Knox had to let him go out in Seattle. New England and Buffalo right now. They are at the half. It is 10-7. Patriots with the lead there. Pittsburgh running it up against Houston, 17-0 at the half. New Orleans and Tampa, play, Tampa Bay, they are playing down at the Superdome, and it is 14-6, the Saints with the lead in the second quarter in that game. And Dick Lehman Bennett had to call the plays today. Did that put a lot of pressure on him? Well, I don't think it does. He's an offensive coach by heart anyway, but taking over for Jimmy Ray, who was hurt in an accident this week. That was Larry Hardy for the Saints, and then it was Dave Wilson going to Hobie Brenner, and the Saints have jumped out to that lead, and the Bucks have settled for a couple of field goals in that one. Denver has just gone ahead of Atlanta. They were tied at 14. Now it is 21-14. The Broncos with the lead on the Falcons. They are in the second quarter of that one. San Diego and Cincinnati 17-13. The Chargers with the lead there. The Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns have gone to the half. With the Cowboys up by 10 points in that one. Philadelphia and Washington. They are tied at 6. And of course you are watching that game here on CBS. St. Louis and the Giants. Big confrontation in the NFC East. They are tied at 10, and Dick Vermeer, what about Jim Hannafin and the job he had to try to do against Phil Sims here? Well, he looks more relaxed than you normally see him. Here's uh, Sims going to Galbraith. Does a great job on third down. Watch him make people miss. You don't give him credit for being that kind of an open field runner, but he's a fine open field runner that's displayed there. Dick, you know, all week long, Bobby Johnson was complaining that Phil Sims wasn't throwing him the ball. Well, he got close, and Johnson did the rest. That's his first catch of the season, and then here's one of the top combinations in the whole league. Roy Green going down the hole. Watch this beautiful post pattern. Laid up right over the outside shoulder. Touchdown. Boy, what a tough combination of the defense. Boy, that would be hard to stand out yeah. there and have Roy Green come at you. And we're going to continue. Irv Cross is standing by. He's out in Los Angeles. The big one coming up, of course, is going to be the Raiders and the 49ers. And we'll have more on that right after these messages from your local stations. Welcome back to New York. You know, later today, most of you will be seeing that early season showdown between the two dominant powers of the 80s. Do you realize that between them, the Raiders and the 49ers have won four of the last five Super Bowls, and they go at each other again this afternoon in the L.A. Coliseum. Now, to bring us closer to the game, Irv Cross will be reporting from the Coliseum throughout the day. Irv, what do you got out there? Well, you know, for the Raiders to win, Jim Plunkett must move the ball against the 49ers' superb defense. Everybody knows that. But at least Plunkett won't have to contend with two linebackers who in recent years were key performers for the Super Bowl champions. Now, this autumn, Dan Bonds and Hacksaw Reynolds are coping with the question every player must face. Is there a life after football? It's not as if Dan Bonds is just sitting around the house waiting for the phone to ring. I've had a couple phone calls from different teams, and each time I get fired up and uh, I'm ready to roll. I feel like I can be a starter on uh, most of the teams and uh, bring a winning attitude and uh, get a chance to play a couple more years. Dan Bonds played only six seasons, long enough to start on two Super Bowl teams. Yet suddenly at 29, he finds himself out of football, but not necessarily out of work. He owns a thriving bistro near Sacramento. I look at football as a stepping stone, okay? Here's something I love to do and I've done all my life, and hopefully this will help me go on in life. Life goes on at a slower pace for Pat and Jack Reynolds. Now 37, Reynolds is going through a tough transition. Life after football. It's a difficult period, but the best thing to do is, uh, is to get away from it in some respects and others to stay closely close to it enough that you still feel like you're part of it it's it's a funny situation it's a it's a pull it's a pull and push tear away type thing they called him hacksaw a 15-year veteran whose life was consumed by his passion for the game a throwback player who now has only the vaguest idea of what he wants to pursue maybe make a commercial maybe write a book maybe even suit up one more time. Uh, is there some hope that somebody will pick me up? I don't, faintly, I'm not, you know, banking on it. Now that you're out of the game, Dan, what do you miss the most? Well, I'd have to say what bothers me the most is uh, game day. Everybody says the worst time, the last half an hour, you're all keyed up, let's go. Uh, but you love that. You know, you're getting fired up, you're getting prepared. And, that, and that's what I miss the most, that coming out just for the game, the excitement. These days may be more tranquil for Dan and Elizabeth. 
more time for their daughter. But there's still a void in Dad's life. It's just really depressing to sit there and say, hey, I could be out there doing that. It hurt me. My first thoughts about they said I was released and I wouldn't be back was that I was really kind of upset. It's just really hard to put it down or even express how I really feel. They played side by side on the 49ers two championship teams. But around the Bay Area, it was Dan Buns who gained lasting fame on this play. I didn't realize how close he was. I didn't, wasn't sure if he even got in after I hit him. And uh, it was the, probably the best play of my career and probably the one everybody will always remember. To get a chance to play in two Super Bowls and uh, be associated with, you know, the super athletes that San Francisco has, uh, it was all worth it. It was the best thing uh, that could happen to me in my whole life. You know, every year when the cut list comes out, you see one or two names you can't quite understand. Dan Buns, a young linebacker playing good football on his way up, is out of pro football. I wouldn't be surprised to see him come back. Brent? All right. You know, Dick, I can't remember a linebacker any more intense than one Hacksaw Reynolds. He came into the league intense. In fact, he was born intense, I think, really. That guy, <laughs> you know, I was around him for four years, and you, I bet he really misses football. All right. Let's send you back now to the stadium and a game you're enjoying on CBS. Eagles led 6-0. The Redskins caught them, and then Philadelphia missed a great opportunity for additional points. They had first and 10 at the 11-yard line and went backwards. Hank, and I guess the big story here is trying to interpret the Washington offense. That, that really is the big problem, and I think the big problem they've had, really, Jack, is that they have not done a good job on first and 10, either running or passing. They've, they've, I think they've thrown the ball five times on uh, first and 10, only completed two. But I think they have to keep the Philadelphia Eagles out of that seven defensive back situation. And to do that, they have to get a bigger chunk on first and ten to play them with the normal defensive structure rather than waiting to throw against those seven defensive backs. That's really been their problem, plus the fact the Eagles are playing tremendously well on defense. It seems to me, Hank, the Redskins are a lot like a team that has two quarterbacks. Now they have Riggins and Rodgers. We've seen them play so often in the past. Theismann throwing, Riggins running. Now, what do they want to do? Now, what are they doing out here? What do they really want to do with their club? I think they like to establish uh, what they call the Washington kind of football, Redskins football. They haven't been able to do that consistently yet. They're doing it very well defensively, but offensively they are just not making it happen. And I think they have to start, again, doing a much, much better job of making something happen on first and ten. That's got to be the key for them. The other thing is, I think Rodgers provided a good spark when he came in the game. I think he's carried the ball eight times uh, an average about uh, close to five yards per try, which is uh, very outstanding. And I think he has to play more maybe to give him a little bigger dimension from an offensive standpoint. And it used to be Theismann to Monk, and we don't see that much of him anymore. No, you really don't, but here again, they're not doing enough of it on first and ten. On the late downs, Jack, when it's obvious passing situation, they double cover Monk. Monk, and it's hard, you got to be a magician to get the ball to him. So you got, as a result, you really want to get the ball to, to their outside people, I think, on first and ten. I invite you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. And by Big Shaver for normal skin and a Big Shaver for sensitive skin. Now there's double trouble for stubble. As a result, you really want to get the ball to, to their outside people, I think, on first and ten. I invite you to see, drive, and live today's Chevrolet. And by Big Shaver for normal skin and the Big Shaver for sensitive skin. Now there's double trouble for stubble. There's John Riggins. He was not in the scheme of things very much. In fact, it was Keith Griffin on those screen passes and George Rogers running from the tailback spot who gave the Redskins their best offensive sparks. We're about to start this second half with Washington kicking off. That means Jeff Hayes. And it also means Herman Hunter. He'll be back at the other end. We had a chance of rain today. It looks like it's going to stay away. Bassity crowd, 55,000 plus. Really tough to get tickets here in this park. The game next week for the Eagles will be at home against the Giants. And these Redskins have a tough trip. They're playing at Chicago next week. And what an assignment that is. 
Here's a kick by Hayes. And Otter took it on the goal line. Running in the same direction each time. Hayes in trouble. He is short of the 20-yard line. And things were played, I would suspect, on a rather even keel statistically in the first half. Let's take a look. A tackle by Raphael Cherry for the Redskins. First downs, 9-7. to seven. More rushing yards. Passing yards about the same. Turnover for each. Right at the end of the game, meaningless turnovers. Time of possession. The Eagles have a slight edge. And the ball is at the Philadelphia 18-yard line. Jackson in the backfield. One of the reasons he left San Diego was traded over here. He doesn't catch the ball very well. He can run. He was stuck cold that time out near the 20. Tackle by Charles Mann, number 71. Well, that's interesting. They've been running straight ahead more to their left than they were to the right. That time they start the second half by design, evidently, and they run right at Butts and also... Charles Mann and try to get a surge there. Second down and eight. They're bringing the plays with the wide receivers for the Eagles. Here is a slanting running play by Michael Haddix to the right. Boy, it's tough to do that against Washington. It really is. And that time they were in an overshifted defense. Darrell Grant was on the nose of the center, and he isn't there very often. Normally he's on the left guard. That time he was on the center, and it was overshifted that way. And in spite of that, they still went where all the traffic was and uh, no way in the world to make yardage that way. Charles Mann made another tackle. Checking in is Dean Hamill. The rookie out of Tulsa on third and seven. He's playing defense for the Redskins up front. Out of the shotgun on third down. And a flag goes, and that will make it third and 12. Leonard Mitchell. On the right side, number 74 beat the snap count, and the center did not snap start, the ball. Number 74 offense, third down. Jack, the other thing that's interesting on that last play, they got five. They got five defensive linemen in the game now, trying to put more pressure on the quarterback. They did not do that. Now they bring him out. Dean, they bring in, bring out Dean Hamill. 78, who was the fifth lineman. Now they go back with the extra, four lineman there. And the extra back, Hamill, or Cherry. Third down and 12. And running with the ball is Herman Hunter, and he's way short of a first down. That's a strange call on third and 12, isn't it? It really is. Tackled by Stuart Anderson. But here again, the uh, hope and expectation is to get a little bit more room from a punting standpoint or possibly have a back be able to break a tackle and run for the necessary yards for the first down. I, I don't think you can hope for a guy to do that very often against a team like the Redskins. I think if you're going to throw the ball, you ought to throw it downfield long enough so if you make the catch, you're going to get a first down. Third punt of the day for Mike Moran. Left-footed kicker. Ken Jenkins inside his 40. The Redskins should be in good shape when they get the ball. Now, Mann is lined up on the outside trying to put some pressure on him, but doesn't that time. And we'll check the bounce. Jenkins gets a lucky bounce from the 35 to the 40. And he is out near the 47-yard line. The Redskins are in good shape. Jenkins returned it. He's out of Bucknell. And a free agent. Tackle downfield by Dave Little, one of the Philadelphia tight ends. At the 47 of the Redskins. You know, I'm surprised they haven't used their off their unbalanced line any more than they have. Wiggins in the backfield. There's what we're used to seeing, Monk. He carries down to the 42 for a first down. Ronnell Young covering. Watch Monk, number 81. He starts off downfield and then breaks to the outside quickly. A very high percentage kind of a pass. Reggie Wilkes is trying to make a play. And finally, the defensive corner, uh, Ronnell Young, 43, makes the tackle. First down at the 42. Riggins hitting his tracks, and down he goes. 
Strong defense by the Eagles. They've been keeping their club in it. We're tied. Gary Cobb, the linebacker, and Greg Brown are in on the defensive action. You know, it's funny. I, we talked to Ken Clark yesterday and had a nice visit with him and uh, asked him whether he liked to play on the nose of the center or would he rather overshift and play on the guard? And he said, well, reading very frankly, I'd much rather play on the nose. I'm used to that position. And I know exactly where the blocks are coming from. Here's a toss to Griffin. Trying to turn. Couldn't get outside. Turns upfield. Gets modest yards. Going to be third and long. Yeah, the Clark likes it down and dirty, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Gary Cobb with another tackle. Number 50. Nick Griffin can scoot. And look at the size of that Joe Jacoby. During the offseason, he got married in March. Bought a new home. Very excited about that. And he also has a celebrity golf tournament in his name for the Heart Association. And uh, last spring, they raised $20,000. Pretty good. Yes, sir. 11.20 left in the third quarter. Seven defensive backs again. Third and five. Driven in motion. Look at Griffin. In the middle of Griffin. And he dropped the ball. Incompletes the call. Fourth down. That time he had a one-on-one -on -one situation on, with Ray Ellis and uh, had the option, it looked like, to run either inside or outside. They had a chance to make the catch, but dropped it. Jeff Hayes will try to pin the Eagles down deep in their territory. And Hayes, by the way, is a pretty good runner. We've seen him run out of punt for me. Yes. And it wouldn't be a bad play here, would it? No, he has the option to do that. If the defense is right, he has the opportunity to go ahead and take advantage of it and uh, Run the, run the play from uh, deep punt formation. Evan Cooper is at his 10-yard line. He's handled. Whoa. Look out. They came with a full rush and darn near got it. He hung up high and it's going to bounce inside the five. What a great kick. He just barely got it away. Hopkins and others. Ellis. Waters almost blocked it and it's on the two-yard line. What a kick by Jeff Hayes. 36 yards, but it pins Philadelphia back at their two-yard line. It'll be tough to do. They give it to Michael Haddix. He's from Mississippi State. Tackled by Olkowitz. One yard. Well, you talk about being in a soup. That's where, you, where they are right now. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him try to throw one up on top from this, this area because he's got a very nimble quarterback and chances are you wouldn't get caught. How about a quick kick? There's a fumble. Fumble! Redskins think they have it. Eagles think they have it. I thought the Eagles had it. There's a lot of scrambling going on even as we wait. Even as we wait. There's a lot of movement down in that pile. The biggest guy in the bottom of that pile is going to wind up with a ball, Jack. That's what usually happens. The strong guy down there is going to take it away from the little guy. Looked Mike like, Quick. Mike what? Quick looked like he finally recovered the football for the for the Eagles. See, that's what happens. You know, a, a conservative running play down here, Jack. You fumble the ball. You know, then all of a sudden, bang, they got great field position. But if you throw it, and even if, if it's intercepted on a long, on a long play, well, you got a chance to at least... To, uh, to think about it almost like a kick. We we'll watch that play again as Haddix fumbled. And there, there's Mike Quick. Yeah, he really worked to get it, didn't he? He put the vacuum sweeper on it underneath there and sucked it right up. They're at their five. Third down has been a dilemma for the Eagles all year long. It really has been. I think any time, you know, you're in third and nine consistently, boy, that's a lot of yardage to make up in one play. And for the year, it's been even more than that. Yeah, and for the year, it's 12.3, which is really murder and only 27%. Now the Redskins have the crowd into it. Third down and seven from the five-yard line. Out of the shotgun. The center centered over the ball. Four-man rush. The Redskins. By the way, that last time out was charged to the Eagles. So they have two left in this half. And the referee is telling the quarterback what to do. Quick snap usually takes care of that. And that time the Eagles lined up with Quick on the outside along with Kenny Jackson. And they're playing man for man on that side with Daryl Green and Vernon Dean. 
Dexter Manley is the agitator down here. He's getting this crowd all revved up. Looks like a Norse orchestra leader. Yeah, all he needs is a baton out there to make things look official. He and the cornerback, Darrell Grease, they're both revving the crowd up. They're down six. Center to center saying, I can't hear a thing. Center says, I can't hear a thing. is typical of the Redskin crowd, but the first time today we've heard it. Yeah, this is more like it. This is more like what we're used to. Outside and caught by Quick. Nobody's going to care. He went the wrong way. He's still going to run. A man behind him. Had he gone straight down the field, nobody would have touched him. What a big play and a big save by Dean and Wilburn. That's, that's what they were looking for. I mentioned they were in man-for-man -man coverage, Vernon Dean and Daryl Green, and he ran right by. Watch now. Look at this. Look at Vernon Dean on the outside. Quick, quick is in the slot. Look at what happens. And right he, over the top and of Darryl it. Daryl Green looks like he just lost the ball trying to make a play on it and of course quick has great speed wilburn is in hot pursuit number 45 and he finally makes the tackle but there you talk about getting out of the trouble and out of the suit what a big play oh what a big hit on michael Hattie. by stewart anderson who is filling in for monty coleman at the left linebacker spot that pass play was good for 69 yards Mike quick before the game on the field I said Mike how do you like grass compared to synthetic turf he said I love grass which is unusual for a guy who plays on synthetic turf most of the time and Kenny Jackson feels the same way and he runs straight and he'd have gone right down the field and he got a single on the right side and a draw play a good for big yards by Michael Haddix with Olkowitz making the tackle See, Washington plays a lot of man-for-man -man coverage, Jack. They double cover one guy or the other, but they still wind up with one-on-one -on -one most of the time, and I think you have to take advantage of that a little bit more maybe than they've tried to take advantage of it here this afternoon, talking about the Eagles. This kid has a great arm, and he'll get the ball there in good shape if they have the opportunity to throw the ball one-on-one. -on -one. We haven't seen the quarterback draw by Cunningham, and we see them practice it each Saturday. Well, they, they like the quarterback draw in close, Jack. The quarterback draw is perfect right about the eight-yard line going in. That's when it's best. Jackson is stopped on third down. It was third down and about three, and he lost the yard on the tackle by Olkowitz. They have not done a very good job of holding blocks when you go sideways. The best thing they've done is run straight at the defense, and uh, they're more successful doing that and throwing the ball than they are trying to run sideways. And they... Great illustration of it on the last play. The field goal tried by McFadden. He has kicked successfully from the 41 and the 36. This will be 38 yards. He pumped it good, and the Eagles go back on top. They led early, six to nothing. They lead now, 7:33 left in the third quarter, nine to six. Paul McFadden out of Youngstown State. He's only 155 pounds. He packs a wallop. Well, he does. He's got a great, uh, great power, and he doesn't. He's not very big, as you mentioned, Jack, but he's got great timing. Here's the kick to Ken Jenkins. High short, Jenkins on the 11. 20. He's out to the 31. Well, it's the second time in a row that Washington has had very good position in which to start. started Washington on their own 33, 24, 9, 37, 16, 35, 18. They haven't had what you'd call very good field position, and when they've had pretty good field position, they haven't been able to take advantage of it at all. Major Everett, Andre Waters made that last tackle. 
Here's Rogers and he takes the win on the pass oh, play. And it was wide open out near the 50-yard line to Warren. Warren, one of their tight ends, tackled by Griggs. They had a good fake that time. They used the eye formation. George Rogers was a tailback. They had a good fake. They held the linebackers. And uh, for that reason, they were able to hit the crossing pattern to Don Warren, who was wide open between the defensive backs and also behind the linebackers. That's what happens if you throw on first and 10, Jack. You can't wait till they get the seven defensive backs in there to throw the ball. And a 17-yard pickup to the 47 of the Redskins. Another fake. Left sideline. Incomplete. It was high and away, and Muhammad tried to pull it in, but he couldn't incomplete. You know, talking to Muhammad yesterday, he played for the Raiders, as everybody knows, and it, with the Raiders, he was basically a deep pattern guy, and he had to really con reconstruct his his uh, route process because they throw a lot shorter passes here, and he's still, I don't think, in the groove as far as catching those short routes and also responding to the short routes. Pretty good musician, isn't he? Oh, he's terrific. Started playing the piano when he was six, and he's got a record coming out in the fall called Celine, which is his middle name. Second and ten. Somebody there, Joe. A little misread with Muhammad again. See, there again, there again, Jack, I think with the new receiver, especially, of course, he's had Monk for a long time, but Calvin Muhammad is a new receiver, uh, comparatively speaking, and the sink between the two of them is not there yet. And there was a great illustration. I don't know what, uh, I don't know who made the mistake, whether Muhammad was supposed to go deep. Somebody did. Somebody did, very obviously. <laughs> and that's, those are the kind of mistakes you don't see the Washington Redskins make very often. Guys with eight out of 20, 87 yards. Seven defensive backs again. Got one foot in, and that's all. That's the way it looked up here, also. Roy L. Young covering. Got one foot in, and that's all. You know, it didn't look like he was very sure of the catch, even when he made the reception. What he does, he reads the coverage and then breaks to the outside. It's very high, brings it down, one foot in, but the other one did not make it, and the official was right on the spot, and it was a good call on the part of the official left in the third quarter. Evan Cooper is back awaiting the fifth punt of the day from Jeff Hayes. You talk about it being a game of inches. There was a great illustration. Had he thrown the ball a little bit lower, it would have been easy catch. They almost blocked it. They didn't run into the kicker. Another good punt by Hayes, and it bounces out of bounds. Down inside the 20-yard line. Well, they mark it at the 21. Well, the Eagles take over. They got a field goal the last time they had it. And there's the score. They lead 9-6. 6.17 left in the third quarter. Joe Gibbs is not bragging about what's going on these days with his football team. He has a lot of concern. He really has, and of course, the other guy's very concerned is Bobby Bethard. We talked to him before the game, and he was very concerned, especially with a tough schedule coming up in the next three weeks. From the 21, Cunningham, play action, drills a line drive, and it is caught by Kenny Jackson for a first down. He throws it like a baseball, doesn't he? Oh, he's got a whip. He has got a whip. And there again, a first down pass with play action. See, he fakes to Haddix going into the line, holds the linebackers, got plenty of time to throw the ball, throws the ball in front, and uh, Jackson comes up back to meet the ball a little bit. Darrell Green finally makes the tackle. 15 yards, first down of the Eagles 36. Time Haddix did carry the ball and got about three. Five and a half left in the third quarter. That time they ran uh, right over Butts again and made pretty good yardage. Doesn't happen very often. You know, interesting thing, I talked to Mark Dinnard before the game on the field. I said, you're going to have a picnic today. You're not going to have a guy in your nose very often. He said, oh, I'd rather have a guy in my nose rather than play against an even spacing. I'm more used to it. And I know where he's coming from. Kind of an interesting observation. Second and seven, a toss to Haddix, nothing good. The ball came loose, was the play over? Yeah, the play was dead. The play was dead, Okowitz made the hit. 
Well, that Olkowitz has gotten a lot of mileage out of his ability. Oh, he? Uh, he really he, he dances every dance and plays every play, and he's a tough guy. You know, he's very smart, too. He reads things extremely well, and they try to keep those tackles, trying to keep people off of him most of the time, so he's free to make the tackle. Third down and seven. Brook and Jackson are both to the left. And it is incomplete and almost picked off by Vernon Dean. We try to force that one to Kenny Jackson. Eagles will have to punt. But that's typical, Jack, of a guy, a young fellow who's got a terrific arm. He has such great confidence in the velocity of the ball that sometimes even the coverage is close. He's going to try to get it in there. And really, Jackson could have made the play. Look at the average for Horan. The kicking game has been outstanding for the Eagles. Darrell Green is back to get the punt. Watch it here. If he gets a hold. And Severe said before the game that they normally had been able to put enough pressure on him where he hadn't kicked well. But he's kicking very, very well here today. High snap and the left-footed kicker thumps it. Now watch this guy if he gets a hold of it. Darrell Green. All the way back to the nine-yard line. He can fly. Almost burst out of there, didn't he? He came out to the 21. But Washington doesn't have the good field position they had a while ago. We have 410 left in the third quarter. The tackler was John Kimmel, an Eagle linebacker. That was a 52-yard punt, 12, 14-yard return. I think, I think the Eagles think they can win this game. Well, talking to them yesterday, it's very obvious they thought that they could win the game if they just didn't beat themselves or lose the game. They were very confident uh, to a man. Everybody we talked to felt good about the game. Clark in motion. Muhammad and Marks to the right side. Out here is three to Clark. He's on the move. And he got about five across the 25-yard line. Harry Clark, a rookie out of James Madison. Wes Hopkins stopped him. Wes Hopkins is all over the place. He's like a linebacker playing safety, weak safety. Got good speed, great timing, and really a terrific football player. And talking to Fred Bruni last week, he said he thought they had the best set of defensive backs they've ever had since he's been with the Eagles, which is quite a compliment. Second and five with Rogers. Here he comes. There he goes. First down. Out to the 34. Rogers, I think, gave him a little spark earlier in the game, Jack, and he's and comes right back here with another good shot right straight ahead. Look at the offensive line. Huff. Huff gets a good block on the linebacker. Good hit by Ellis, and it's Briggs. First down at the 35 of the Redskins. Rogers again. Fading tackle by Roy Nell Young at the 50-yard line. Roy Joe Jacoby and Russ Grimm, they're getting off the ball a lot better. But see, they're doing a good job. Watch, watch the surge. And look at they come off the ball in good shape. Reichenbach is blocked into, uh, by the left guard, Grimm, and George Rogers cuts back, which is something he likes to do, and is finally tackled there by Roy Nell Young. 15-yard run, Rogers 10 carries, 59 yards, 225 left in the third quarter. Look First the, down. Look at all the room on the left side again. Boy, they got a lot of room. That's where they're looking at, and the pass is. caught by Monk. And he works for additional yardage. He got six to the 44. It looks like they're throwing. It looks like they're throwing the ball over there by accident more than by design. Look at Monk going motion, breaks out into the flat. Look how open he is. Finally gets hit, hit there by Ronell Young, and he still fights for some extra yardage on the play. On second and four, Riggins comes in. What a one-two punch this is. Rodgers and Riggins. Inside the 40. And that's going to take us up to the two-minute mark remaining in this third quarter. Connolly got a good block. The center that time got a good block on Clark, number 71. And any time the center gets a block on the nose man, you know you're going to make the yardage up the middle. Brown and Cobb had to make the tackle. First down at the Eagles' 40-yard line. 9-6, to six, Philadelphia leading. 140 left in the third quarter. Clark goes to the left. Didier splits wide right. Monk 
Bucks on a wing. Boy, look at that left side again, Jack. Inside hand off to Monk. There it is. And he ran inside the 35-yard line. And he got about seven yards before Reichenbach tackled him. And the Redskins are coming at the Eagles from a lot of different angles now. Well, they look looking like they're expressing their personality on this drive. Don Warren made a great block there that time, 85, the tight end. But that was a reverse play, a counter play. Got the defense going one way and came back the other. But the Eagle defense still doing a terrific job there, playing the run and also the pass. It's the third time that Monk has carried the ball this year. Second and four with Riggins. This is the Riggins down ordinarily. And a delay. He is stacked up and got about two. That time they're in the unbalanced line again that time. That's about the second or third time they've used it. Unbalanced line meaning that they bring jo Joe Jacoby over from the left side to the right side. Hopkins made the tackle along with Wilkes. I don't have a... I don't have a picture. We're going to use the chalkboard, but our picture is out. We'll show you the replay here. At that time, they were in an unbalanced line, and all that happens is, as I started to say, third and a yard and a half right here, live action. Jacoby goes over and replaces Warren, and Warren goes back to his spot. Riggins, that's a first down. but a relentless drive now and that might be the final play of the third quarter Otis Wansley was in there helping with the blocking the ball is at the Eagle 28 and that's the end of the third period folks and Riggins is huffing and puffing the Eagles have the lead 9-6 to six. the end of the third quarter the score 9-6 Philadelphia we pause for a word from your local station and by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Lights, it doesn't get any better than this. It's a first down for the moving Redskins at the Eagle 28. We start the final 15 minutes. On balance line again, Jack. Riggins lurches down near the 26. And about three at the most. by Byron Darby. We haven't seen Tom Struthers today. He was in there briefly, but on passing downs, but not very often. Riggins is good for three. The rookie Clark comes left. Here's Riggins in trouble. West Hopkins right on his back. And they finally wrestle him down. Wes Hopkins and others, including Reggie Wilkes. It's going to be third down. We'll see where they mark him back at the original line of scrimmage. Watch the pursuit of the Eagles. He's trying to stretch it to the outside. Look at the good angles. They have a good pursuit angle, and, and Wes Hopkins comes up there and makes the makes the tackle and scrapes the ball loose. That's a mugging, isn't it? Yeah, it is a mugging. Third got down and ten. Got the hook in there and scraped it right out of it. Muhammad goes right. Monk comes left. Didier splits left. Clark on a wing and ties him back to throw. Put to the sideline and it is caught. Caught for a first down inside the twenty by Monk. He's a magician. What a good throw by Tyson. Yeah, he threw that right on the money. Not beat the defensive back is off of Monk. It was third and ten. They were playing very loose, weren't yeah, they? They were, yeah. By the, he thought by the time you see Herman Edwards, he likes to play the ball, and he thinks he had, has good enough recovery speed, but once the ball is in the air, he can make the play. But he was back there so deep that he couldn't make the play before the ball got there. It's the first down for the Washington Redskins. At the 16 of the Eagles, Monk has caught five passes in each of the three games, and there is Byron Darby. Well, they had lost uh, Tom Struthers at that left-end spot last week. He's back in there now as Byron Darby goes to the sideline. 
Cook has caught five for 63 yards. That was good for 13 on third and 10. Big throw, big play. Talking to Bonk, I asked him whether he'd rather leave the line of scrimmage from an anchored position or a man in motion. He said, oh, I like the man in motion because they can't jam me nearly as well. First down with Riggins. Take the hand pass and drop at the five-yard line by Muhammad. That was right in his belly. His hands got the way. I don't care what you say. You see, this young receiver has never done much of that. Look at all the room he's got on the inside. Look how deep Herman Edwards is. And he breaks to the inside behind Hopkins. You see, the ball is right there at the numbers. He just dropped it. But it, it, with the Raiders, you know, really, he never had to catch those kind of balls. And it's, it's evidently a problem for them because he hasn't had yet kind of work with those kind of catches. I know you like those receivers that wear gloves. Oh, those gloves are murder. Second and ten. Everybody's coming. They dump it off to Griffin. And he got back to the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be third and ten. That should have been a better play than it was, Jack. They were blitzing up the middle which means if you got everybody faded, you throw the ball outside, while well, you ought to be able to make some yardage. But watch everybody coming on. Look at the blitz right up the middle. They're putting good pressure on him. Briggs is coming. Throws the ball outside. Wilkes slows him down. Wilkes slows, but he see, he dances a little bit too much, Jack. Instead of making a decision and going with it, he did a little tap dance. By the time he made a decision, school was up. Briggs made the tackle. Third and 10 at the 16. They're coming again. And he unloads it and it is taken it away. Well, that was a smart play by Albert, Albert Fowles. Fowles. He knew he couldn't catch it. He made sure nobody caught it. Good one-for-one -one coverage, and the ball looked like he was thrown a little bit behind. He reached up there very wisely. Look at it. Good coverage here. Fowles is looking at the ball all the way, and he knocks the ball away from the receiver, and it falls incomplete. As they try to get it to Monk. Well, the Eagles have stiffened again, and here's a 32-yard try by Mosley, who is two for two today. I really thought, Jack, I couldn't tell, but it looks like he had a chance to make the interception. He missed it. A 32-yard miss by Mosley. That's the first one he's missed all year. And the Eagles will get the ball at the line of scrimmage with 12.55 left in the game. Yes, sir, the Eagles are ahead. You're the only guy I know has more money than Jack Kent. Oh, yeah, don't I wish. Had a great visit with Jack the other day out at practice, Mr. Cook, chairman of the board, Washington Redskins, and he was ecstatic about his football team. He said, I think without a doubt we have the best talent that we've had here since I have been here. Uh, they're not playing like that yet, but they will eventually. He was very confident. And I thought they would do a great job here this afternoon. Randall Cunningham handing off, and the back slipped as he got into the line. Haddix. Jack, interesting stat. Eagles have had 18 plays on first down. They've run the ball 13 times, and we're five for five on passing situations. Here's Mark Mosley. Just Eagles. missed from 32. Just missed one is right. From 32, that's very, very unusual for him. First miss of the year. Milan and Okowitz made that last tackle. Second down and eight. That's a fumble. And it belongs to the Eagles. Now, I thought his hand started forward, but evidently he didn't get it going, and Dexter Manley undressed him. And it's going to be a fumble and an Eagle recovery by the rookie Kevin Allen. And Manley is slow in getting up. He's very going to be third and long. Very obvious that Kevin Allen had a problem that time trying to block Dexter Manley. And uh, a lot of people in the league, a lot of tackles have a lot of trouble blocking Dexter Manley, so it's no surprise that a rookie would have trouble. But talking to Kevin Allen last week, he said the run responsibility doesn't bother me much. It's the pass protection that's a problem. Twelve minutes left. Philadelphia leading. And a big hit right at the 10 yard line as they tried that little forward pass behind the line of scrimmage. Jaworski was in there for that play. It's the first time he's taken a snap today. And they tried that little forward pitch to Haddox and uh, Darrell Grant nailed it. That's the old shuttle play that Dallas used so much from the 
uh, from that formation, but they played it extremely well and almost lost the ball carrier on the play. They say Cunningham's going to come back. He hurt his shoulder. He's being tended to. Now Michael Oran is in the end zone, and once more the Redskins should get good field position. What? Daryl Green is the deep. They, they, they could try to put some pressure on him, not necessarily to block the kick, but just to make him to make it a bad kick. Very little pressure. Oran gets it out, and Green takes it on the 49. made that tackle. Second half of the doubleheader is the 49ers visiting the Los Angeles Raiders. And have a capacity crowd. They're each one and one. Those on our Washington affiliate will not see the game, but the Baltimore CBS affiliate will be carrying the game, and the rest of the nation will see that one, which figures to be a hard knocker. Redskins are at their 47. the bunk. How do you stop that? Ray Ellis wrestles him down at the 48. They've had great success with that. We're sending in motion and throwing the ball out to the flat. And they did it again that time, but they don't get a quick cover on him. And uh, he picks up about five yards on the play. 11 minutes remaining in this game with the Eagles on top. They've never been behind. Nine to six. Second down and five. Jacoby pulling on the play. Rogers follows the block. Jacoby gets a block in the hole. He fights right into the pile and comes right out the other end. Ray Ellis finally makes the tackle, number 24. Boy, I tell you, Rogers gives him a spark. Carried 11 times for 72 yards. First down. There's the same play going the other direction with Huff. Uh oh! oh. it away. But here again, he's carrying the ball in the wrong arm, and for that reason, the ball is knocked loose. And Hopkins picks it up. And he returns it down to the Washington 25. Here he comes. Ball in the right arm. That's where all the pressure's coming from. They scraped the ball loose. We brought up that point a little while ago. That was Cobb who stripped it, and Cobb, Hopkins who picked right. it up. That's right. Cobb made the tackle and Wes Hopkins picks it up the scampers down to the what 25 yard line 25 first down Eagles and Cunningham is back in there hands off to Ernest Jackson his blast is good for almost five yards Okowitz tackled it we got an upset in the making Henry we certainly have we certainly have and I was amazed, as, as really as poorly as the offensive team has played, the talking about the Eagles the last two weeks, how confident they all seem to be coming into this game. Second and six. Jackson again. Okowitz missed him, and he got good progress. It'll be third and short. Other games, you want to know what's going on? The Giants are playing at home, and they lead the Cardinals by 10, the undefeated Cardinals. In the third quarter, 20 to 10. Darrell Grant made that last tackle. And we have Detroit trailing by a point at Indianapolis, 7-6, fourth quarter. New England by three over Buffalo, fourth quarter, 17-14. And Pittsburgh blanking Houston, 20 to nothing in the fourth quarter. And New Orleans winning handily, third quarter, 26 over Tampa Bay. Five defensive linemen in the game again here. Third and two. Now he has to throw, and it's caught, and it is a touchdown to Ernest Jackson. Well, that's what they
that running quarterback will do for you. That's the first Eagle touchdown of the year. I tell you, that was not a play that was a busted play. It was by design. He rolled to his left with the idea of coming back to uh, He rolled to his right, then came back to his left and hit the receiver who was wide open coming across against the green. Watch this again now. Look at it. He rolls to his right, rolls to his right. Now he stops and goes to his left. Darrell Grant is a nice look at Butts. Gives him a push. And he hits Jackson for the touchdown. And we talked about the people saying he didn't catch the ball well. Talking to Jackson, he said, I catch the ball well. They just never threw it to me. But he caught it there in good shape. Extra point by McFadden and a 10-point lead for the Eagles. 8.38 left in the game. Washington's RFK Stadium. The Bears and the Ritz. After recovering the fumble, 25 yards in a minute and 21. 17 yards, Ernest Jackson, the Eagles' first touchdown this year. And the first professional touchdown pass thrown by that man, Randall Cunningham, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Here's the kick by the 25 to the 26 yard line well watch the touchdown again they got five defensive uh, linemen in the game again jack they got a guy on the nose watch he rolls to his right then he stops and goes to his left grant had an angle on him man is in hot pursuit 71 and he dunks the ball off to jackson who they say can't catch the ball well but he sucks this one up and goes into the end zone for the touchdown a great impromptu play scramble play by uh, Cunningham or else it was by design it's hard to tell it looks like it was by design now Tyson and Griffin in the backfield and the ball's batted down incomplete Harry Cobb the linebacker got his hands up number 50 who say the fans Philadelphia hasn't won here since 1980 watch watch Cobb he's playing comes to the inside he got a control blitz he gets his hand up in the air and knocks the ball down. You know, Hank, when Washington gets behind by 10 with eight and a half minutes left, you got Wiggins and Rodgers both out of the game. You're right, because they got to throw the ball, they got to pump it up and get the ball down the field as quickly as they possibly can until they get their two big personalities out of the game. Muhammad and Monk come to the right now. Monk goes in motion. Look at all the room over here on Kevin Muhammad. Look at all this over here. Rick Heisman is looking. He drops it off to Griffin on a screen. Griffin gets pretty good yards out near the 28. It's going to be third and long. Ken Clark, number 71, was there. They've used that play frequently today. Yeah, they have. Three didn't it, quite get out there, did they? No, the, defense, the defensive people are playing so deep that they're trying to use a variety of ways to throw the ball in front of the defensive backs. But the, uh, what's happening, the defensive linemen and linebackers are reacting extremely well and making a play. Here's a critical third and eight for the Redskins. Seven defensive backs again, sir. Ripping in the backfield with him. Has time. Now he is hit and dropped first by Brown and then by Clark and it's fourth down and the Eagles are just creaming them here. A, a newcomer, Smiley Creswell, number 82, was also in on that. That's the first sack of Theismann today. Watch Brown, number 98, the defensive right end. Seven backs, you can't find anybody. No, you really can't. There he came. He got a piece of him. And by the time, by the time uh, anything happened, it was all over the stadium fell in on him. Gres Greswell that time was also in on the play. Number 92. Sixth punt of the day by Hayes. That's how tough the Eagles are playing. They stay away from the kicker. Evan Cooper watches it bounce. He's going to try it and get a couple of yards. He's out to the 45. 7-11 left in the game. Next week in the National Football League, the Giants will be traveling to Philadelphia, and I'm sure that the Eagle fans will turn out in mass, and these Redskins have to go to Chicago, and they might have a record of one and two at that time. It could happen, and as, as Bobby Beathard mentioned before the game on the sideline, he said, the thing that concerns me, if we don't play well today, then we might have a very difficult time playing well offensively against the next three teams, especially Chicago, next week with all the great variety of things they do defensively. And yeah, because they play Chicago, then St. Louis and Detroit. Trying to keep the ball. And what's happening? 
screen here with Jackson, who got the touchdown a short while ago. He's to the 30-yard line. Tony Peters finally stopped it. Ron Baker and Leonard Mitchell both came off the ball in good shape. Yeah, look at the block they get on Butts. They knock out Mann to the outside, and uh, he pops right through their straight-ahead blocking. Good running on the part of Jackson. Good block by Michael Haddix on the play. Haddix really did make a good block, number 26. A 26-yard run, 12 carries, 71 yards for Ernest Jackson. And they try him again. Well, you don't always run well against the Redskins. By the way, Hank, whenever a fellow like Jackson, an accomplished player, is traded from one team to another, he said, everybody perks up their ears and say, what's the reason for that? And everybody thinks bad things. Well, that's right. They're always looking for a reason for why he was traded, and they're looking for something bad instead of being something positive. This kid is an excellent running back, and as you saw, he can catch the ball, I think, much better than people gave him credit for, for being able to catch it, and uh, I think basically that was the knock on it. It's second down and 10 after the tackle by Butts. Six minutes left. Jackson again. He's a worker, man. We saw him frequently with the Chargers. He ran to the 25, and Charles Mann made the tackle, and the old clock is killing the Redskins here. Well, they're what they're doing now, Jack. They're using the outside receivers way wide, and they got a double wing formation with a back on with somebody on, outside of each tackle, and they're just blocking straight ahead, and he's picking his way and making good yardage on the play. You know, if the Eagles on third down and six can get a field goal on this drive. They'll lead by 13 and force the Redskins to make two touchdowns in the last five minutes. Maddox runs and he's slammed down at the 27. So the field goal team will come on. Another you know, good tackle by Oakley. It's ironic, Jack, that they do such a great job of running straight ahead. They have not run sideways very well. And in a critical third down situation, they try to run sideways. There's a flag down, by the way. Uh-oh, Washington offside. Uh-huh. That will not make it first down. Delay the game. 12 men on the field on the defense. 12 defensive players. That's going to make it third down and about a yard and a half when they mark it off here. That's great. That's There's an great. old friend of yours, Rich Pettibone, next to uh, Gibbs. And he's done a terrific job here with the defense of the Washington Redskins. Did we see Cunningham reading plays on his wrist? We yeah, do. He, he's got him slapped on his wrist there. Right that's right. Matty, right? Came from the past. Yep, and what a great player he was for the Baltimore Colts. Third down and one. Five defensive linemen in the game again. Jackson gets a first down. So the Eagles keep the ball, and that's going to take us down to about four and a half minutes left in the game. So Dinner. Washington, the delay. Excuse me, Jack. Mark Dinnard and Steve Kenny. Boy, they come after the ball that time. They get a good surge, and the ball carrier, Jackson, is following the surge and making good yardage on the play. Picked up a first down. The next clock. Ten-point lead for the Eagles. That penalty. Set up that third and one, and they got the first down. Okowitz with another tackle. Jackson wants it again, and he drives near the 15. Take us to the four-minute mark. Herman Hunter that time was on the wing on the right side, off, outside of the right offensive tackle, that double wing formation. And they seem to be having good success with that. They're just blowing right off the ball and blocking straight ahead. Stuart Anderson and Okowitz were involved in the tackle. Well, after this hard-knocking game, you're going to see more of the same on CBS with the 49ers and the Raiders. One of those teams will be one and two when the day is over. They'll play before a big crowd out in California, and you'll see the game here on CBS. And our Baltimore affiliate will carry it here, though the Redskins affiliate will not because of the NFL rules. The ball's at the 15-yard line, and it's second down and seven. And the Redskins have called a timeout. Each team has two left in the game. And Joe Gibbs is trying to figure out how the heck to get the ball and how to get back into the game. You know, I, did you notice yesterday talking to the Eagle players, everybody to a person, everybody to a man, really exuded a lot of confidence in the young quarterback, Randall Cunningham. They all said he's learning, but he's going to be super, and he's going to get it done for us, and that kind of thing. And uh, I'm amazed how much he's improved in just one week. He looks much, much better this week than he did last week, and that's justified because he's spent all 
that time working with him another one unit. Second down and seven. Look at all the room on the left side again, Jack. He slides down and the flag goes down. He's inside the 15-yard line. Okowitz with another tackle. Looks like it might have been Spagnola. You mean he held? Well, I don't know what happened, but it might have been John involved in the penalty on the play. Let's see what they call. Offside against the Eagles. You could tell something was amiss when they snapped the ball. Well, that slows them down. They were perking very well. Offside, offense, number 81. Oh, 81. And the wide receiver, Kenny Jackson. No uh, excuse for that, Hank. No. Nope. All he's got to do is look inside for the ball, wait for it to snap, along with uh, listening for the count. Second and 12 at the Washington 20. And there's Kenny Jackson going off the field. They're going to see that draw play out there, Jack. So they got to get close. I don't think they'll throw. Do you? There's no need to throw. No, I wouldn't think so. Haddock's carried for a few up the middle, and Todd Liebenstein made the tackle, number 79. There's Jaworski. And by the way, Cunningham has said some nice things about Jaworski. Yeah, Jaworski has uh, really helped him as much as he possibly could or can during the course of the week. And uh, it's been a big help, and uh, Cunningham made a point to mention how much of a help Jaworski has been. Now the Redskins are forced to expend another timeout. And they do so with 328 remaining. They have one left, as you see. The Eagles have two, plus the two-minute warning. We'll give a timeout for either. And there's Joe Gibbs. And uh, the gentleman on the far right in the jacket, curly hair, scratching his own way, Wayne Severe. He's a special teams coach. And Richard Pettibone is behind him with a baseball cap. Yeah, Petty Bond's got the head the headphones on right there to the left of our picture right there. Got the paper in his hand. He's got to be very concerned. And he was concerned going into the game because he didn't know what quite to expect from this young quarterback, Randall Cunningham. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. Third down and nine. And they are going to throw. And it is dropped by Spagnola, the tight end. The defensive back, Dean and Peters, were both there. Somebody might have gotten a hand on the ball, but that could have been six. Yeah, he looked like he didn't see the ball correctly or something the way he... No, nobody touched it. Nobody touched it. Uh-uh. He just dropped the ball. That's all it was to it. It was perfectly thrown right on the money. Shame on you, John. Look what the quarterback... Watch Cunningham. Oh, oh smokes, he said. Mackerel, he said. Here's a field goal try of 35 yards by McFadden. He's kicked three today. And he makes it again. And the score goes to 19 to 6. So the Redskins need two touchdowns. McFadden's a happy fella. A most happy fella. 320 left in this game. Hank, you and I have been coming here frequently. You just don't beat the Redskins here on their turf. In fact, they've won eight in a row here at home. You're right. You're sure right, Jack. But again, it's very obvious from an offensive standpoint, they are out of sync. They are not playing like they're capable of playing, like they usually play. And it's very obvious and very noticeable. They can't figure out what's wrong. Joe Gibbs said, I did a lot of things in training camp, try to make us fresh and, and uh, ready to go when we came out of the starting blocks. But we, it, it just hasn't worked. And I don't know why we're not playing well offensively. Joe Gibbs said he changed his entire training camp routine to try to avoid this slow start. McFadden has just equaled his previous high. 41 yards, 36, 37, 34. Four field goals in one game. Another good kickoff to Jenkins from the two-yard line. The Eagles have been tough tacklers today. We're down to 3-10 left as Heisman and company have to get to work. Major Everett, captain of the special teams, made the tackle. One thing about Washington since Gibbs has been here, Jack, is very obvious they have not, not been a team that gets off the block very quickly. In 81, they were 0-2, 82-2-0, 83-1-1, 84-0-2, 85-1-1, 84-1-1. So 
you know, it, it's a funny thing why they started so slowly, but that's been their personality, and, and Joe talked about it in great detail the other day, and he did so many things to try to change it, but it still turns out to be the same. They get off to a slow start. And in 82, they won the Super Bowl game, didn't they? Yes, they did. We have an injured player, and that's Paul McFadden, the kicker. Well, somebody take a shot at him way back upfield. McFadden is stretched out. It happened about 25 yards away from the action, back upfield. Tonight on CBS, we have 310 left here in this game, 60 minutes. Murder, she wrote. Crazy like a fox and Trapper John, MD. The usual great lineup of outstanding TV on CBS tonight. Well, McFadden is up and walking off. Somebody dinged him. Yeah, he must have just got a, a bad shot, an unexpected shot. But he's walking off the field in good shape. He got a little help there, but he's seemingly he's going to be all right. It happened well away from the focal point of the action. He's been a dandy performer today. The ball is at the Washington 24. Six, seven defensive backs for the Eagles. Looks like, again, something in the middle would be uh, appropriate if they can get the ball in there in good shape. There it is. And Monk catches it inside the 30. The fans, the fans want him to go downtown with every throw, don't they? Yeah, the, and they can't. They got seven defensive backs, two guys playing deep in the hole, and uh, the, the middle is vulnerable if they can get the ball in there. Hurry up offense. Second down and four. Clark is after him, and he throws it away. Third and four. He had a chance to hit Monk right between the hash marks that time, but didn't get, didn't have a chance to get the ball off because of the pressure. Had to escape to the outside and threw the ball away just to avoid the loss. We got good news about Paul McFadden, the Eagle place kicker. He got a finger in the eye, and he's all right. Now they have eight defensive backs in the game with a three-man rush, Jack. That's illegal. <laughs> They're all good, too, aren't they? Yes, they are. They got everybody in the act right now. 243 left in the game, a critical third down coming up, third and five. Look how deep those backs are. Third down. No pressure and a poor throw. Ellis is covering on Griffin, fourth down, and uh, I think the Redskins might have to gamble here. Listen, you know, when you got eight defensive backs, you have to throw to, throw, try to throw through. Boy, it's a tough problem. And ties with, with bad numbers. 15 for 33, 124 yards. One, I don't think one intercepted. I don't think I've ever seen him have this kind of a day. And of course, it isn't so much Theismann. I think you have to give an awful lot of credit to the Eagles. They have really done a terrific job defensively. You have to give Marion Campbell, Fred Bruni, that whole staff a lot of credit for the great job they've done defensively. Here's fourth and five. Fourth and five. The ball goes over to the Eagles. The ball a bit underthrown on fourth and one, and Monk couldn't handle it. There, there, been, there, there have been a few drop balls today. Yeah, yeah, there has been, but there again, that area was the, the open area, threw it in the middle. He just dropped the ball. And they take it over on the Washington 29-yard line with 2.33 remaining. Watch Monk in the right of the screen coming across the middle. You see he's wide open, and the ball should have been caught. Normally, that's an easy catch for him. It was a little bit behind him, but in spite of that, he should have really sucked it up and made the catch. Here's Jaworski with a smile. That's the first smile we've seen from him this year. <laughs> Since the second game, at least. Well, he's... He and Marion Campbell, they think they've got one tucked away. They give the ball to Haddix. And the clock winds down. Darrell Grant made the tackle. We'll come up to the two-minute warning, and then the Redskins have only one timeout left. And they're trailing by 13 points, and they expend their final timeout right here. Boy, coaching is a mysterious business, Jack. You know, you watch this team practice, and I said this many, many times, and I'll say it again. I think of all the teams I watch, probably the Redskins are the best rehearsal team uh, that I've seen. They do things precisely right. They get the field marked properly. They got everything set up perfectly. Had an official watching practice and looking for penalties and that kind of thing. The execution was sharp. Talked to Joe Gibbs yesterday, or Joe Gibbs and also Joe Theismann. And Joe said that very honestly, you know, it was tough for me to recover from the Dallas loss. I didn't get over that till about Thursday of the next week. 
but I'm back in the groove and I feel great. And all the pieces uh, seem to be there, but they just don't fit. The referee came over and told Joe Gibbs, you have no timeouts remaining. They're talking about next week, I guess, against the Bears in Chicago, Theismann and Gibbs. And there was real concern expressed by the head coach yesterday and apparently for good reason. Other games, you want to know what's going on elsewhere? Here it's 19 to 6 Eagles. There's our first final, and Pittsburgh beat Houston by the score of 20 to nothing, bouncing back from their loss to Cleveland. And the Giants in great shape, leading by 17 in the fourth quarter. And both of those teams will be 2 and 1 when the day is over, apparently. We have more scores for you. fake a good fake too and the mistake was no he didn't go out of bounds the clock continues to wind down and the little bootleg as he tried to pick up the first down did not do so it's third down and now we have the two minute warning he did stay in bounds as Raphael Cherry bumped him out of bounds two minutes left Eagles pulling off an upset very unusual picture here you see Joe Gibbs the head coach of the Washington Redskins and Joe Theismann, his quarterback, sitting on the bench with two minutes to go. They've been there for about eight minutes. Yeah, and they're talking about something. They're talking about evidently what went wrong today. They want to make sure that they get off to a good start next week. They're talking to each other, trying to find out what the other guy thinks maybe, or Joe Gibbs is trying to make sure that Theismann realizes that he might have a bad day, but he still feels strongly about his ability. He's going to continue to play. They're going to do things better. But if something's going on is very, very unusual with the head coach and the quarterback both sitting on the bench with the, with the game still 154 left in the contest, and they're talking about something pertaining to this game and pertaining to this team. Eagles, Interesting. Yeah, the Eagles tried to get a first down, and they came very close to it. I think they're short. It'll be fourth down. The Redskins cannot stop the clock. 154 left, and as soon as they measure and set the ball, They'll start the clock again. They are short by about an inch. Oh, Peepers is still working, eh? They're good. They love to get those carrots last night. It always helps. Fourth down. They're just going to run for it, and even if they turn it over to the Redskins while they have a 13-point lead with 154 remaining. Look at the empty seats here in this park, and the people have then, escaped. Yeah, it doesn't take long for them to evacuate the premises. They can read the scoreboard, and they know what they saw. Now they got McCalvin Muhammad on the bench on the other side of Joe Gibbs. they got Theismann Muhammad and also Joe Gibbs all sitting on the bench talking about something. They see a quarterback sneak here. Fourth down. Yep, and he... Ooh, that was pretty dangerous, and... <laughs> he tried to reach over the top. He's got a first down with all of that struggling. You he know, does have. You know, Jack, one thing about this young guy, he really has to have big hands and strong hands the way he handles the football. We've seen him get hit from all angles in the last two weeks. He has yet to fumble, except the one last week where he, we really thought it was an intentional grounding, but they called it a fumble. Have we mentioned his brother yet? Well, Sam Bam Cunningham, right. yep. What a great running back he was for Southern California and the New England Patriots. But this kid is a terrific athlete, and we said at the outset, he's going to make things happen. He got a first down. And uh, he will. He almost handed the ball to one of the Redskins reaching over the top. There, Marion Campbell trying to keep his club alert for the final 132, and in fact, it's over because on first down, the Redskins can't stop it. And so... Cunningham will just snap the ball a few times. As this uh, routine is going on, let's check some scores of other games. Gave you the Pittsburgh final earlier. They beat Houston 20 to nothing. Indianapolis trying to win their first. Hangs on to a one-point lead over Detroit in the fourth quarter, 7-6. And quite a game between New England and Buffalo, 17-14 New England. Fourth quarter, New Orleans 20 to 6 over Tampa Bay, fourth period. That score has remained that way for quite a while. And uh, Denver and Atlanta in a shootout, 34-28 in the fourth quarter. And a tie in the fourth quarter, San Diego and Cincinnati. Another one of those great defensive games. Yeah, and Dallas leading by 13. Danny White caught a touchdown pass in that game, by the way, thrown by Jones. There is a penalty, declined, second down, clock running. They put the time back on the clock. They declined the penalty, so it's second down. 
officials have handled this one in good shape. It was wild here last week, wasn't it, Hank? It really was. That Houston game and the catch and the ruling. But that goes on in a lot of games, a lot of stadiums every Sunday. Let's start the clock again after this snap. And there you see it. One minute left. There's Theismann along with Muhammad. They've got a lot of weeks work ahead of them. Executive producer of CBS Sports, Terry O'Neill. Senior producer, Chuck Milton. Produced by Mark Arnold today. Bob Dumpy, the director. John Fortunato, the assistant director. Now, thanks to all of the crew. This doesn't happen very often. Coming down to the 32nd mark. Redskins are out of timeouts. Cunningham taking a look at the clock. And this game is over because the 32nd clock will not force them to snap the ball again. In fact, the game clock and the 32nd clock are right with each other. Well, congratulations, young man. And congratulations to Marion Campbell. Both of these teams are one and two now. And apparently the Giants and Cardinals are going to be two and one. It's going to be quite a division, eh? It's going to be wild right down to the finish. It's going to be a stock market season up and down for all teams. And it's going to be exciting and interesting. We had a 6-6 tie at the half. But there's the final. Eagles by 13. Stay tuned for the second game of our doubleheader where the 49ers face the Los Angeles Raiders. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station. One bunch of